at the end of the day, every every threat, every coercion is like either loss of freedom or death. So if you A, know that freedom is literally synonymous with spirit and it is the grounds of your being. And it when they say the universe is love or God is love, what they mean is freedom because love, think about when you really love something, you're cool with it expressing itself in any myriad of infinite potential. Welcome to the Cosmic Keys Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 7, and on today's show, I'm speaking with Chance Garden, who's the host of the Interverse Podcast. This is Chance's third time on my show, so he is the guest I've talked to the most, and we just had a fun, random Thursday night live stream over on Rockfin. Uh, You can get the video version there. There was um, some chat participation, and it was my first go at the uh, live streaming. So to get that live stream where my show and Chance's show is available, uh, just go to rockfin.com. For my show specifically, it's rockfin.com slash creator slash cosmic keys podcast. Um, So yeah, we cover a lot of ground on this show, and I think I'm just going to bring you all into it, so stay tuned for my conversation with Chance. It's good to see you, man. How you been? Bro, it's really good. I'm happy to see you. And life is just always getting better, expanding like crazy. Right. And really enjoying it. Uh, despite the hardest efforts of the distortion to creep in to the edges of my awareness and peripheral vision and be like, you know, this is why the world's actually getting, getting worse. I'm over here holding it down like, no, life's definitely getting better. Yeah, I know, I kind of know the feeling because today was definitely one of those days nine nine where it's like, where there was some current events stuff that was floating out there or like the um the, the supposed like mandate for vaccination, um, that just gets everybody riled up and then you, I personally just like had a, a perspective change where I'm just like okay, phase, phase two or phase three, like, like, where are we going now? And and it's, I'm thinking of scenarios in my head, like, okay, I live in Colorado. Am I going to have to move to Montana? Like what's, what's going on in Montana? So I'm like thinking these ideas already. Um, but that's also coming from pressure with like my day job, putting the pressure to get vaccinated. And I'm kind of like preparing myself for that, isn't the mandate like a hundred employees or more? You you have to mandate it. So it's like the government's not making you get the the poison dart, but they are making your company make you get it, so that it's technically on your company <laughs> liability. It's a really clever plan. This is why I think that what we're seeing right now is that the governments are being set up to fail. Like I really think this. I heard this. I think from Crow, but. He's right on the money. And the more I think about it, it looks like, especially in places like Australia, they're they're trying to get us to be over it. You know, I think there will maybe be some sort of tipping point could even be as early as next year to beginning of the year. As crazy as that sounds, as far as I know, the sky clock is changing a lot uh, around the beginning of next year. A lot more like Jupiterian expanding energy, totally flipping the script on where we're at right now. So I I was looking at that like it's our dreams coming true and things that we've long been trying to manifest and wishing for come into fruition for those of us that are doing the work and on the path. But then I thought, oh, but wouldn't that also be the great time to usher in the replacement government where, hey, uh, you work for Taco Bell, they're your government now, or you work for Amazon, they're your government now. We're just going to do 
corporations or government, we're just, that'll be the one world government. They'll all answer to like, you know, whatever the great reset world economic forum or whatever bond supervillain puts himself as the figurehead, who knows how that'll look, but maybe that's the idea is that those long held plans and dreams come to fruition with the uh, sky clock change as well. I don't know. Maybe it's too soon, but definitely would think that kind of move would be the goal by 2030. Maybe they got to make it worse first, but who knows? Seems like it will be a future of, because of what precedent's being set right now, you will, it's like a new neo-feudalism, I guess. Whatever company you work for, they are the ones that enforce the laws and decrees from on high upon you, where you live, what you can, what you put into your body, you know, all these wild things. So that, that seems like the way it's going. I don't know. Government by Taco Bell. <laughs> no, I'm with you. It's, and like the, the thing about it is that <laughs> I've been thinking about that, the blending of corporations and governments. I mean, even just by that. The synthesis this, of the dialectic, dude. Yeah. It's been, and it, it's always been what the darker cult is doing. And it's par- I, I think that partially when I think of like SJW isms and all of that woke stuff being fully embraced by the biggest corporations really. So there's like that kind of synthesis with like cultural Marxism and the massive corporations. And then even with this mandate, like why does it only apply to co- to companies that with a hundred employees or less? Like well, it, it makes it sound less crazy, but think about how f- many fewer of those companies are actually around right now after the stranglehold we just went through, you know, the choke slam on small businesses it, you yeah. know, you hear that and you're like, oh, well, you know, a lot of people work for businesses with less than 100 employees, but how many really do now? How many really do? I don't know. But probably less than we think. Yeah. I mean, even where I where I live, like I live in um, a resort town where the economy is a lot of like hospitality, food and beverage, like hotels and stuff like that. And even that, like there's so many the big corporation and that's like the ski corporation is Vail Resorts. They definitely have over a hundred employees. And I, I, the company I work for is um, smaller. So like, we don't have to worry about that, but I've already had, I mean, there's always, there's already been the $200 bonus if you get it. (laughs) And then now there's, they're like, well, it's FDA approved. Like we can technically, enforce this so literally in my head i'm just like okay what am i going to do if i get laid off for for refusing vaccination or jab or move somewhere less expensive yeah i know <laughs> i'll cook you up with some couch dude it's not bad over here right well M- missouri is um pretty like what's what's the um climate like out there right now with your guys's local laws and stuff like that they all still believe the once and future Orange King will return to save them, I think, mostly. If you get into the big cities, especially St. Louis, uh, maybe Columbia, which is the University of Missouri town where I was where I went to college, you know, that gets to total woke tardation <laughs> big time. Yeah. Actually St. Louis is on another level because it's like woke but also super gangbanger hood dangerous. And, you know, there's a lot of history of the government in their eugenics schemes in St. Louis, some some very famous ones. But you get outside of those major population centers, it feels like the empire's reach is kind of weak. They did use the town I live in as like a poster child of Delta cooties, scary spreaders. Yeah, yeah. We may. I, I think that the city government. You know, the municipal corporations that masquerade as government, <laughs> mm-hmm. city of Springfield incorporated. I think they took a deal or whatever. They got $40 million. It's like whenever a uh, a fighter takes money under the table to take a dive. So they got $40 million to put on all this big show about how they can't get enough people to get the uh, roll up your sleever and not enough people are complying with masks and there's not mandates and we're the reason why the cooties is spreading because uh, it's a generally kind of obese area or whatever. So mm. tisk tisk, you know, tisk tisk to our silly conservative Bible Belt people that 
don't really buy all this stuff and all the Amish and Mennonite people that don't have a TV. So they're immune to cooties completely. Uh, none of them get it. <laughs> kind of so like you have Mennonites people. close by where you live? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh nice. yeah. You'll see them at the, I go to like health food, organic grocery stores, local produce, and you see them in there and they don't look like a, a lick of cooties on them and they don't yeah. wear the chin diapers either. But yeah, the the city government took this forty million to, I guess, as like their stimulus package to help them fight the super super cooties, Delta scariant. And what they did with that money was really funny. They were hiring. They mostly spent it on giving themselves raises uh, for how hard they're working during this super difficult time, <laughs> and uh, go, hiring people to go into local communities as literally like moles. And they're advertising this in the newspaper. Like we need good people to go into communities where they're actually from and spread the good word about the, uh, you know, back a nation, the cow, the cow poke <laughs> since vodka meets cow. That's a good dude. That's it. I'm calling it the cow poke. They will never, the Al Gore rhythms will never catch me if I call it the cow poke and it has a good ring to it. That's it. Everyone's got their own uh, name for the jab or whatever. Now that we're in Jabalon, but cowpoke, that's mine. Claimed it. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. It's so, yeah, they were like hiring people to go in as moles, like to go hang out at the local b-ball club or sewing uh, network or who knows, like, and go in as a, a cowpoke promoter, but without anyone knowing that you're getting paid to do that. So it was like a pretty seriously, they're like, they're like hiring spies <laughs> to try to get people because that's how low the compliance is here, I guess. Although they put out the signs like we got it 70 percent. Now it's just you dirty 30 percenters that aren't that are holding us down. But I seriously, when you look at the like YouTube channel for the White House and you see uh, that recent video, they put them out all the time. They have to do these PR videos for the Fresh Prince of Smell Hair. Uh, because he, he's got like, so he's so, so demented and senile, you know, they have to be able to edit all of his appearances as much as possible and make it into nice videos. And they did one where he was talking to an African American woman nurse, cause you got to check as many oppressed boxes as you can, uh, to be the woke left. Right. And he, they were talking on like a zoom call and it was all about like, well, why didn't you get it? You're just now getting it. And anyway, the point of the video, it was hilarious to watch. It was just really stupid. But the point of me bringing up the video is there was like maybe 200 likes to like 20,000 thumbs down ratio. Mm -hmm. And they got to turn off the comments. And so how, how do you reckon that we have a 30, 70% compliance rate with cow pokes, but you know, those are the, the YouTube engagement metrics. I feel like that's gotta be more accurate. Yeah, everything is fake it seems and um even when you just brought up the um the people going undercover and like promoting it and getting paid to do that. I mean, <clears throat> that reminds me of it reminds me of like the diff the um timeline of like how triggered this stuff would get me and I remember when they announced the door to door vaccination campaign, I was just like I was like furious like when those motherfuckers knock on my door like i was like envisioning it in my head and now i'm just like okay so when i get fired for not getting vaccinated do i move to montana or t like now i'm just like more used to it but <laughs> it's been a long dude and road. it's all empty threats like it's mostly yeah. empty threats uh i feel like that's all the media's got left is I really think the force that's behind this entire thing can only really work on on human beings through consent, which is why they're always trying to farm us for consent. And they can only really intimidate or manipulate through implied threats or mm -hmm. blackmail style threats. And then at the end of the day, nobody I know ever has any of these so-called like consequences fall through and uh, makes you wonder just how dangerous it really is to be on the uh, right side of history, no pun intended. Not that I consider myself right or left, but at this point, it's like, I know who I would uh, pitch a tent with if there was a, a civil war. Right. I, I And you mentioned, too, just when I asked you about 
Missouri that you're like, oh yeah, they, they all are waiting for orange man. And even that, the idea of him as the, the savior or the good guy in this situation, like retrospect now that it's like fall of 2021, like I even had a little bit of a shred of that hopium a year ago, you know, cause I knew that that's where I was at a year ago, but now I'm just like, no, 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 no. It seems like Q was c- clearly a psyop. Oh and, yeah. And like, oh, yeah. Not, so like, yeah, I'm, I, even though like he was saying the things that, um, I wanted to hear last year as sort of like a libertarian valued person. Now I'm just like, no, like I, I have even less faith in in him not that i had much to begin with but now i have kind of zero with him because it seemed like it all worked out so perfectly he initiated the big divide between the country triggered the left hardcore riled up the right and the then and then if you're in the q category you were straight up believing complete nonsense for a while and then just Some drove us still do because now they yeah. got an entirely new uh, messiah sorry to cut in but the McAfee telegram group that's hundreds of thousands and growing. It's really wild to watch. To me, it's all Overton window. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you know about that though? What's going on over there? The McAfee? Stuff? No, not really. I mean, I know that I know about his suicide, but um, I, don't, I don't know about the let's newest break hopium. Some things down here. Let's break some things down about the hopium. First of all, Trump is related to Hillary. They're all in the same club together. I'm, Quite sure that he has Jesuit ties. There's the magic word that will lead you a long way if you start, if you want to go down a research avenue that will give you some indication of how this is played out and what it is. Jesuits being like the, you know, the Vatican cat hole lick churches, uh, original ninja assassins and all that. They're kind of the, the first of the intelligence agency style ops where on the outside they're like, a military order, but on the inside, they're just mad sorcery, like crazy satanic stuff. <laughs> That's what the, you know, we've got the same thing going on here. We got the MI6 over in England. Australia is definitely in on it. Uh, but QAnon, let's talk about that just for a second. All right. It's the same thing as CNN. And here's why it's Q- QAnon phonetically is Canaan, Canaan, which is. The Canaanites, this is the sons of Cain, the widow's sons, the May sons. This is all co- like they're always giving you a million clues about who it is behind any particular op. And whenever you see phonetically a QNN or a CNN, Clinton News Network, <laughs> you're looking at the Cain, the mark of Cain right there. Because in Hebrew, they don't have the vowel, they don't put vowels in the words like that. It's, a, it's literally fin, the phonetic Kabbalah will lead you places, but people need to be onto that. And it's kind of like they call it green language in the occult or whatever, but it's kind of a life study to just as often as you think of it, give the words that you're using and reading and encountering, especially in these media hexes, a little deeper contemplation and <laughs> like break them down. What could the parts mean outside of the commonly held definition of the word? What is it connected to etymologically or what other words does it sound like or look like? There's so many different aspects, but green language is just applying the right brain uh, to language. And instead of it meaning the definition that you think that everyone else thinks it means, which isn't even right for a lot of words, you are opening up your mind to the multiplicity of like, you know, quantum entanglement, sympathetic magic resonance of what a word could also mean. And that's a real thing. They got us resonating their magic all over the place with talismanic words that connect to archetypes that they've been commandeering for decades. I'm saying they a lot, but you know, the ones pulling strings here, the the Illuminati or whatever you want to call them. uh, I've been doing a lot of research into this too, try for years, but really trying to get to the bottom of this because the orchestration level of what goes on in the media, especially once you get into the occult symbolism side, it's like, damn, how did a human being even make all these correlations for the spell? 
because the further you dig as a synchromistic researcher, the further it's like, well, it must be some aspect of the sympathetic magic resonating out and bringing correlations to the, to the scene without them, the them, whoever's casting the spells to even need to like line everything up themselves. Or there's some other type of intelligence that's non-human that can crunch a lot of connections into one massive, you know, event for a desired outcome. So I don't know. I've been reading a lot of Pierre Sabak. That's kind of a tangent, but have you heard of that guy? No, I don't think I have. It's really interesting stuff. He's deep in the philological trenches, the language. You said it was one Pierre of his, Sabak? Yeah, this is one of his books, The Murder of Reality, Hidden Symbolism of the Dragon. I mean, you just tell by the cover, you know. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't started that one yet though. I'm reading his other one, Holographic Culture, which mm-hmm. is all about the scriptural occurrence of aliens, basically that are called angels or seraphim, and he's decoded languages by like literally home homeboy just read dictionaries for I guess years, and looked at what he calls polyglottal puns. And this is one of the ways you can catch on to the trail. This is part of green language and what polyglottal puns were about or what they're about is when there are word plays and puns and things of that nature that cross reference between multiple languages that shouldn't, that don't even necessarily have the same root according to, you know, mainstream historians and linguists. And when you see these like cross referenceable puns and word plays, or similarities between concepts, it takes you somewhere because you, you'll realize that like, oh, there's the uh, correlation between boats and maritime stuff and vessels with angels or aliens or seraphim. And this is going back through Hebrew, Aramaic, the later bastardization of that, Arabic, Latin, Greek. Wait, was this guy... On with languages. Did they feature this guy on mysterious universe i don't think they got into him on mu they should but because i remember there was one episode he was on thc though do you ever listen to higher side chats yeah yeah i thought he was maybe, on there pretty recently okay maybe that maybe it's not him because there was a a talk on um mysterious <laughs> universe in the winter where they were yeah, talking about they were talking about I, I feel like this guy isn't around anymore that they were talking about but it was like Jacques a valet it was like a reading of the of Genesis from like a very um, technical Hebrew um, reading of it, where like you base he basically made the oh, argument yeah. <laughs> that it was like all about genetic engineering and like it was basically just like we the aliens seeded the earth or whatever or or just like the the Elohim whoever they are. Um, it's interesting because I've. I don't know if you'd be interested in talking about this, but I want to clarify that a little bit, just like Uh where I'm at, because when I talk about researching this, I don't necessarily, I don't accept or believe that aliens genetically engineered us. And that's our real origin. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I'm open to looking at a lot of ideas, but when I see this symbolism about the vessels and the the sailors or the steersmen, the ones that command or steer a vessel, to me, that could easily be metaphor and a false, like a red herring rabbit trail to uh, think of it as literal off world entities or whatever that had all this power to create us could be that the vessels they're talking about steering are us. And there's some other aspect, maybe interdimensional, maybe a type of possession, or maybe just the fact that media is so good at manipulating people. Medea was the name in Greek mythology of a a witch who bewitched Jason of the golden fleece fame and got him to, I think kill his own children or something crazy Medea. So that's fun. And they, you know, those could be these vessels ourselves could be the ones that they are uh, from on high commanding and commandeering. So I don't know. I, I look at all these things with as many possible poetic interpretations and metaphorical interpretations that I can hold in my mind at once. And then there's that old saying that consistency is the uh, ring of truth. And so I just keep looking for consistencies that maybe let me narrow down towards one direction or another. But mm-hmm. that long rant aside, it is interesting to look at the 
creation story in Genesis because a lot of people don't even realize that there's two creations of man in Genesis. It's not just one. And what's that about? We could talk about that. Yeah. I mean, what do you mean there's two in that case? Well, <laughs> first, first you have Jehovah creating man and that's the first creation. Uh, Jehovah crucial with the names because we get a watered down version where it's just like God and Lord and all these titles that could literally refer to princes or judges or magistrates. God, the definition of the word G-O-D is not just a deity, but it could also refer to a prince, a ruler, a judge, a magistrate, etc. Hey, what's up, Jen Brew in the chat? Just saw we got a Rockfin comment. I'll keep an eye on that for you, Dan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rockfin so anyway, in the house. So anyway, Jehovah creates man. Jehovah is a specific word. It's actually a transitive verb in the original Hebrew, not a noun at all. So the character, the Yahweh character that is a later derivation being a, a named entity like, you know, old bearded man in the clouds or what have you, that could very well be referring to more of a terrestrial non, you know, non deity in the sense of maybe it wanted people to think it was a deity or he and Jehovah on the other hand is more like the Tao. The best explanation of it would be like the Tao if people are familiar with that, but it's the literally the eternal force of life that self exists and perpetually stays in flow. Right? So Jehovah was as a concept, the flow of life force energy through the cosmos self-born never ending in a sense like the spirit that animates jehovah is described as a spirit it's your spirit my spirit it's this divine spark thing that pervades all of nature and then now you you know they ban the use of the word jehovah the cat hole lake church and the uh i believe the jewish churches as well at a certain point in history couldn't even use that name because i think if people had that definition and they use that name it really gives a different feel about to uh you know the Bible, <laughs> if you can distinguish between when it's Jehovah, when it's the actual creative intelligence of all the cosmos versus Elohim was another name or Lord, yeah, Elohim is it. like the, in the very beginning. It's like in and, the beginning, the Elohim, which is like a plural. So of, that's the second creation. The Elohim created Adam as a Jehovah created man. And then later the Elohim plural created Adam. So figure that I look at it like that whenever you give something a name, you can control it. That's demonology 101. If you wanted to install an AI onto a, uh, an organic computer, if you will, a good way to do it would be to give that being uh, a name. And that's the installation of the artificial intelligence because now you're, you're Dan and we all have a thing. We all have an idea of what Dan should be and what he's like or what we would like him to be or what society says he should be, as opposed to that pre, um, you know, that pre, pre fall state where we're all naked and maybe we didn't even have names. And we're literally just like, we are that spirit or Jehovah experiencing itself in the multiplicity of life, but not in a distinguished way where like, I'm you and you're, you're, I'm me and you're you. We're all just kind of like this one life force energy in a configuration. Does that make sense? And then we name it. And now we have mm -hmm. this uh, split of ego and the division between who's who and the expectations we put on each other based on the name and the sympathetic magic and resonance of a name. I'm when you, you know what I mean? Like some people, their name just definitely sounds like who they are. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I feel that way. There's something to it. So anyway, <clears throat> that's Elohim. And to me, that's all the legal, that's like the legal system the very beginning of it, because you can't have uh, without nouns, without person, place or thing, which are not real in nature, by the way, because nature is just a process of continual becoming and change. And it's a total verb. Nouns are total conceptions, conceptual. They only exist in our minds and our imagination. You know, there is no place because you have to imagine the boundaries or create them artificially. There is no person because legally a person is just an entity on paper. It's a corporation. And there is no thing because nothing is permanent in a sense. It's not like a, and also the other reason for that is because whatever you call a thing, 
that's not really what nature called it. You know, they don't, they don't come, shit doesn't come with a label. <laughs> so it just is what it is. And that's what Jehovah is. I am that I am. <laughs> so we, we get this second creation. And I think that is plenty of a manipulation. You don't even need to do genetic manipulation because you're installing this, what uh, Freud would have called the super ego, the voice in your head. That's what other people think about you, what you think other people think about you. The society voice to me, that's the original AI. And I think that's still the one that's, that's a uh, wrecking shit. I think it's always been that uh, personally. And we're out here in like the spiritual communities and new age and people are like, kill your ego. You can't have the ego, but that's the only thing keeping you alive against being completely assimilated to the super ego or the Borg or, you know, the, the hive mind. And I think, call me a rebel, but I think it's actually pretty sweet that we, we did that first division or that first split and started experiencing individuality in different, in a new way, but it's definitely time we take responsibility for the whole game and not, (laughs) and I'm not looking to go back into the sort of pre differentiated state of primal unity. I think once we bite that apple, we're here, but let's uh, get real about how we got here, what it means Take the take the reins a little bit and not let that pull back into the womb lead us into artificial wombs that are going to just kill us. That's what it is. Yeah, it's well, it's funny. I've been kind of on a kick lately of following <laughs> following um, Instagram accounts that are converts from the new age. To Christianity, like evangelical Christianity. Oh, that's the move, dude. They're dude, they're seeding that so hard for the last couple of years. I've seen it. Yeah. Like that and spirit science guy that went all Christian. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's been i I'm all about it because first of all, I was I was raised Catholic, so I have that programming. And it's it's been helpful for me to be like, okay, what do I actually think about this stuff? Um but me, me observing it. First of all, that's like what, like, they're like, get your Bible, read the Bible, just read the Bible. I was like, okay. So I got the Bible app and I actually like read the beginning of Genesis. And I'm just like, what? Like, I I don't remember Genesis being like that, where it is like this weird genealogy and like historical, they jump from like one era to the next very quickly. So it was really interesting to just to think of that Genesis as like a historical or like prehistorical document. But, um, my biggest takeaway, like I can't look at like the new age the same now could, because like it, even though it, watching these creators has not made me convert to Christianity, but now it's made me critique the new age in this like new way. And I'm just like, it is kind of bullshit there's so much bullshit within the new age and the mainstreaming of it yeah the mainstreaming of it is i'm like if if there weren't all these people doing these new age distractions would more people be truly awake and would we, we would we really be standing up to this like new world order situation that's unfolding so it's mostly just you know outgrowth of theosophy and other golden dawn style crowleyan weirdness that gives us a lot of what passes for the new age or cherry picking from Eastern religions to create sort of the, the best philosophy for not having to be responsible for anything while also inflating your sense of self beyond what is reasonable with this whole, like, um, I am everything. We are one. I am God. (laughs) Like, I'm now. I'm sorry. Every time I see the catchphrases now, I'm just because I I follow a it's lot. It's just of, communism, dude. That we are. Yeah, one thing. It's but just like, but it's just well, ironically, it's you're not allowed to have spirituality in communism. So eventually, they'll just drop oh, yeah. that, and the state will be God, I guess. But I mean, it's like I follow so many accounts um, where it's just like an infographic or something, and not, I just can't. I can't handle the the same catchphrases anymore. Where it's just like, you are the universe. Like you are God, you are the like, and and when I'm really thinking about it, I'm like, no, my perception is so freaking limited, 
as a human. <laughs> there you go. I am not God. I don't know anything. And so with the Christians, I'm realizing like, and, I, and the more I look at the Christians, the more I'm like, this is a psyop too. But it's just like the humbleness, the bowing down, the giving away your will to Jesus or to um, the God of the Bible and just the Bible. Um, the but Bible. but like on the one hand, it, there is like that total submissiveness of hardcore Christians. But on the opposite end, their critiques of the new age saying they're not humble. They have their head up their ass. They aren't doing anything. It's just narcissism. That's valid too. So I'm just like, okay, tell me more Christian well, it's people. Just like the Cokes, <laughs> the, you know, your MAGA, MAGA country, they've got legitimate critiques of the Pepsis and the Pepsis have legitimate critiques of the Cokes because both sides are slave ideologies. And I think the same, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, traditionalist Christians out there, but at the end of the day, if you didn't learn from your new age explorations that the Bible was actually encoding the sky clock, not that there's not other things in there, but that's where you want to, that's where you want to go. I mean, I'm all for reading the Bible, but get it straight on the alchemy and the uh, zodi- zodiacal allegories, because then you'll actually understand what the hell you're being told. And it's a, it will give you more of a connection to nature. And as to address the God thing in terms of like the new age, we are one stuff and what you brought up was a really good point my awareness is extremely limited i think that whole idea is just so close but not quite on target and why is because it's not that you are jehovah so to speak but jehovah is you so that's the confusion you know the divine spark that animating force the life force energy self-existing existence you're in it you're part of it it create it, it did create you in the sense you are born out of that fractal like a fruit of a tree of life, right? So it definitely is something you're connected to in a very powerful way, and it empowers you. But to be like I'm the whole thing, that's just silly. Because like, did you look in? Did you check out the world lately? <laughs> you, so you did this. I'm, I I can blame you for this. <laughs> you know. Well, like, yeah. There there's that. Then there's also um. There is no such thing as evil. That idea is fucking ludicrous. If you don't look around and see evil everywhere, like what are you doing here? So that's what's Again, motivating it's on a truth because evil is there to teach us lessons and it exists in the fractal for our growth. But that does that doesn't like excuse it. I mean, just just emphasis the emphasis of like. There's no morality. There's no good and evil. It's just it's just wishy washy, wishy washy gray area. And I'm like, okay, the gray area has kept us like basically in a fucking haze for the past twenty years. I'm thinking of the twenty year timeline from like nine eleven and that. But like the, I just I don't. Good. I don't think any of this woo woo stuff. And I am like an av- I'm like promoting woo woo stuff. I'm interviewing people and talking about woo woo stuff, spirituality, new age stuff. But I'm just like, on the one hand, it's waking some people up, and there is like a co- a cohort of like truth or new agers. But I just think it's just like, stay in the gray area, wishy washy. Nothing's gonna happen. Meanwhile, there's like Australia is happening, or fucking the, real the, ones the are United the States. Spirituality, dude. That's the new word. We're can spirituality embrace it we're in it <laughs> no yeah totally but but like and on conspirituality people are loud and vocal and stuff but um i don't know i i i'm i'm just i love critiquing um both the new age or i love like exploring both the new age and christianity because like no i'm not reading the bible now and being like oh my god i'm like i'm not um turning into those types of people who are just like just the bible everything else is the antichrist everything else is bad but i'm like this bible i actually really want to explore like i want to have more conviction when i am comparing new age versus christianity to be like what does this actually say how like what is really going on rather than just like oh it's just a it's you know mistranslated don't even bother with it it's like no like even on the bible app you can look at all the different versions and i was looking at genesis 
in like the, maybe it was the new international version. And it literally said like, and God built the heavens to, to like emphasize holy days so that the, the planets and the stars tell you when holy days or holy events are happening. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like it's legitimizing astrology. But then when you switch the translation, somehow that gets like all swept under the rug. So it's to, it's, I think it's just an interesting new rabbit hole. And I think the, my just, I'm me being sick and tired of the wishy washy. Everything is love. Everything is great. And as the world is fucking burning, as Australia has camps, <laughs> like the woo woo is serving like the, the, comp- the complicity and like the distractions of like what's really going on today. And nailed it, dude. It just seems. And now I'm just like, fuck the new age. Like get me out of this fucking like, uh, opium haze and like let's get a little fired up and like address I was in a this tyranny with some friends today about gene keys and it was like two hours long gene keys and human design stuff and oh I yeah love these, yeah i love these friends but that's you said opium haze that's kind of how i felt when i was in there i was like man I, this doesn't actually make sense like it's based on things that do make sense but we're getting so far into like complexity here it's just unnecessary over analyzation and at some point i think maybe the key here is that we need to reignite the rebellious spirit within and let that be our guide and that will get you going you know get fired up with that blue flame of anger because like you said it's fucking on like i know camps in australia it's on like the, the war is literally here it's against us we're not fucking around like i'm not trying to get into a combat situation or whatever but it's time to get real on our sovereignty grind. That's for sure. Uh, well, whatever it, it is, it's we interesting too. That. I, because like you have a background in like, um, I don't know, like jam bands and like hippie stuff. <laughs> and like I was, t- I I live in Colorado, and all my coworkers are, you know, still go to a lot of shows and stuff. And I'm just like, I was never big on the jam bands. For the record, I was more of like, a, you know, rave kid. Right, right. But just like the festivals and stuff like that. Um, but I was asking my my coworkers, I'm like, what are the Wooks up to? Like, are they getting vaccinated? Like, do you have a sense of like from your community and like the festival scene that you have a background in? Is it more people that are awake or or and just like against this tyranny or more libtard type people that are like a lot of Pepsi's in the, in the field there? Yeah. A lot of Pepsi's. Uh, that's the blue side, everyone. The fake yeah. left. I call that just, lib. I just call them libtards and like. Come on, Pepsi and Q-tards are on the right, but yeah, it's the same shit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, I get lumped in as a Q-tard because I'm a anti cowpoke over here. Mm-hmm. South Park did a great job of doing that to the collective mind, associating anti-vaccine people with Q-tards. and while at the same time making fun of some stuff that's probably really super real, like. Uh, Obama torturing children and the fifty thousand dollars worth of hot dogs or whatever that was in the the leaked emails. That that aside, and maybe we should talk about you know what's going on with the McAfee stuff and get into Q a little more while we're in this zone. But the festival fam, uh, a lot of them are perfectly happy to still go to the event after being deprived for two years to the bigger events. Perfectly happy to go, even with the restriction in place that you got to bring your papers of having your cooties test or your cowpoke verification, whatever. Me, I drew the line at that shit, obviously. Like, I don't care how many times I've been to this event. I already had bad feelings about the bigger ones almost every time because it just feels like, A, the more people you get together, and I don't know what the magic number is. Maybe it's like 2,999. Everybody looks out for each other and everybody's cool and fine, but 3,000 people, somebody dies. It's something like that. There's this weird humans swarming locust effect that occurs at a certain size of party, especially when there's a lot of substances that people get up to in those places involved. But when I go to these, I've, I've gone to some this year, but they were low key, you know, a few hundred, maybe a thousand people at one of them. And Still had an awesome stage, had awesome light show, 
great headliners only had one stage to deal with and you don't like feel like you're missing things. It's great. We need more com- we need more frequent, smaller events like that. And n- then there's no pressure on you to follow all the stupid restrictions because it's not even that big anyway. And there's not a lot of money to extort out of you. If you know, you're going to get sued or taken down or however the threatening works, the coercion. Cause I think that's really all the AI can do is blackmail and threaten and as soon as you know your rights, you're good. Like as soon as you really know your rights and you know that whatever threat would have be a violation and you don't have to accept that offer contractually. I don't like, I think that's universal law, baby. You got, you got the right to do anything that doesn't harm other people. They're, that's the beginning and end of your rights. And if you know that you're good to go, government doesn't matter. It's not going to mess with you. If it does, there will be serious repercussions that will change the script but we've been trained from a lifetime of tv and movie and games and and what have you that oh the boogeyman could jump out at any minute and end your life and cut it short and you know we do know some things that happen and karma plays a role and the people's own decision making plays a role with how maybe their life does end in some strange or violent manner but generally speaking i'm telling you this is something i've come to accept the more self-assured you are in your energy and very, very key that you're paying attention to your energy. Honestly, and you're not lying to yourself. It's like one of the first rules of initiation into anything. Not that I'm an initiate of other than I initiated myself into learning about myself, but the more like stop lying to yourself, be honest with yourself. If your energy is good and vibing and in balance, you're in that flow state of perpetual synchronicity. Only things that are there to occur are, that which entertain or enlighten you, you know, that's really, that's real life. All this, everything else is the matrix, all the fear, all the constriction of our energy and the complete raping of the earth and our own bodies through ignorance of how we feel about ourselves and what we're doing to ourselves. It's time to throw that out the window and get real about the fact that you actually do as a spark of this Jehovah energy, you exist because you exist and nothing takes precedent over that. Only thing that's going to threaten that is your own decision to not exist on some dimension of the spectrum that you could be on. And the health is a big aspect of that. That's why they're still making it like an offer for a cowpoke. Even if there's a mandate, it's still an offer. Technically, you don't have to take the offer. It's an offer of an employment. It's at will employment. No one's going to come f- <laughs> no one's going to come like that. That's all scary movie stuff that someone's going to come and do it to you. I really think that. And maybe there's some well, exceptions, but that's generally the, that's generally the way that I've seen life work. I kind of got off the subject of the festival people. My point is that there are some really good uh, wooks out there, but I think they're fleeing from the coast and trying to get, if they're out on the coast and trying to get more towards the, ironically, my friend Banjo is in my telegram group. He's moving to Arkansas from Oregon, which is sweet because we're going to be buds now in real life. But he was like, I ran to Oregon to escape the Bible Belt. And ironically, now I'm running back to the Bible Belt to escape the, you know, woke Pepsis or whatever. Uh, anyway, yeah. rant over. But <laughs> well, yeah, that's I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, it's um. so would you say even when you were saying earlier that uh you know, you only go to the smaller festivals and there's usually good vibes at the smaller festivals, even at the smaller festivals, how many of the, how, what percentage of the crowd do you think is jabbed or like along with the, the, the narrative like that more or like majority or minority minority. I think minority, but I'm mostly hanging out with the other people that are like artists or, creators or people that were already rebelling against the way of life that was handed to them by the super ego version of who society said you're supposed to be. So I think, you know, those are the types that were geared to resist it and not sold out to the level where to save face for a large following that they'll do what they're told, right? Like I'm talking about down to earth people. They don't, you know, the events I've been to, you might have five, 10, 15 people in your workshop or whatever, but that's so real. That's so, you can actually connect with those people. I'm not saying that larger things are all bad, but mm-hmm. there's some, if we're going to decentralize stuff, 
it's time for all of us to get out of the feeling of being invisible and the fear of not being seen and the fear of missing out and embrace embrace this uh embrace this age of information where ignorance is a choice we've all got something great to offer and we all can get on stage and in the spotlight in some degree and i think the time of the one and only master like the best dj or whatever and thousands are going to this festival just to see this one guy but don't you know below the surface he's a rapist and all that i have so much of that in the scene Base and nectar. Or, yeah, we think we've talked about that. I know that was the fir- the first episode we did. We were like, there is this one electronic artist, and we just kept going on and on without naming and then him. Pluto went retrograde in twenty twenty, and he got full on canceled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, we were talking others. about base nectar on that episode, but um, it's yeah. yeah I I don't and, and we all step up. I don't know the know? the um like the music crowd you I, I know you've been critical of like the grateful dead and like the the cult following of these artists and stuff i see it more living out here in colorado where i can just see people that would be like oh we didn't get shows for like two years or whatever I, of course i'm getting my vax i i've got proof i'm getting in it's like getting a ticket for them is like getting proof of vax and um i just used to jump through hoops yeah but and and it's just making me think like you know i'm I'm thinking a lot about this 20 year anniversary of 9 11 and how much things have been flipped because you know you would say wooks and hippies would be the number one anti-vax crowd in 2007 or something and all you got to do is offer a wook a free shot (laughs) <laughs> They'll be confused about what kind of shot it was. I was in Red Rocks when I came in that week that I saw you, and they had a vaccine tent at Red yeah. Rocks during this floozy show I saw, and nobody went to it. So well, that's good. The ones, the ones that I kept an eye on it because I was kind of pissed off. Like, you're in my space. This is my people. But, yeah, uh, I didn't see anyone go to it. So anyone jabbed was already jabbed and wasn't up for a second jab or whatever, second cowpoke. <laughs> cowpoke. I'm still, I like that. But hey, real quick on the 9-11 20th year, I got something for you that I thought was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Proof of the mockery from, you know, our lords and masters. You ever heard of Philip Zelikow? Do you know this name? Ring a bell? I don't think so. I don't think so. He was the historian who was the head of the 9-11 commission. You know, that super awesome, legit group that told us the truth about what happened on 9-11? Yeah. <laughs> Not them, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, he actually had written with, uh, he had written an entire draft of the final report with headings and subheadings and uh, titles and some information filled in before the investigation had even been going on for very long. They were like his own staff, the interns and stuff were, were in circulating internal jokes about it, about how like, oh yes, the uh, it's one bullet hit all five people uh, but we're waiting for the evidence to come in, but we're sure, you know, those are the type of things that they're saying in their internal memos, like referencing Kennedy cover up stuff. But my point is about bringing up Zelikow, the head of the nine 11 commission kind of mastermind of that cover up that took a few years, but they finally delivered it. He has been selected to be the head of an investigation about cooties, a national investigation on cooties and whether the lab theory has any, Credence, you know, they won't check out Fort Detrick labs, but they will check out China labs, I guess, and tell us that no, our Chinese overlords had nothing to do with this. It was just a bad bowl of bat soup or whatever. I don't know. But that guy, Zelikow, holy cow, he is, they picked the same dude. Like, that's how you know that this is a big running joke at the public's expense, in my opinion. That oh, it totally is. is. Even Ridiculous. the fact that the Matrix whatever the yeah. fucking mate like first of all i didn't matrix know they were doing resurrections yeah like the matrix four and like i saw like my By the NPC- wachowski sisters now yeah so a lot i of saw change. my <laughs> my npc friends were posting <laughs> posts with like red pill blue pill and i'm like they don't talk about red pill blue pill because they took the blue pill and then they're like no 
Matrix Revisited 4. Can't wait to see it. And I'm like, oh, they're talking about this movie. Oh, that's the movie's coming out like the the week before the 20 year anniversary as we're literally in the new world order for real. And it, I feel like that's even mocking us. It's like, cause the, I'm realizing like the mythos of that movie, even like it, it's such a key part of like the Q tard stuff, but it's even a big part of like uh, the way I talk about stuff. Like, Oh, I'm like, I didn't take the blue pill, blah, blah, blah. I'm awake. You're not awake, but it just seems mocking that they choose to, release it now you know this close oh yeah on the 22nd of december master builder number they put out so many oh yeah and that's when it's being released programming movies yeah december 22nd right before we enter into the year 22 um definitely some builder energy in the 22 with like we kind of already alluded to that jupiterian vibe that's happening and you know what one of the things that's blown my mind lately is looking at all the the flips and the double reverses from different cultures in terms of the sky clock and how like, you know, some cultures actually pop, uh, pop the moon as the masculine and sun as the feminine or Jupiter as a home of demons and Saturn's actually a good guy. It's very, it's very ridiculous. Like the, it's part of the issue with the new age is further you go into these thought tunnels, like in the more diverse ones you enter, the more contradictions you get. So at a certain point we got to just like get out to nature and, feel our way into this and intuit our way into this and let the the knowing part of ourself actually work instead of relying completely on the left brain and analyzing all the information on a you know knowledge level and non-experiential so not that i have the answers of what polarity planets are or whatever probably all of them have some degree of both polarities but that's a tangent anyway ah uh, you got anything or should I talk about McAfee and what I think is up with that since I did elude? Yeah, that. yeah. Because with McAfee, I mean, when did he die? Was that in the spring, spring or summer? I don't remember. Recently. There's probably something up with that, the date of that. But I am not like following the McAfee drops hardcore. But I have taken a peep into the Telegram group McAfee Afterlife. Last time I looked, over 200,000 people following it. So that's a big question in and of itself. Why is any social media, especially one with a dude who was on the World Economic Forum Young Leaders Group as a CEO, the Telegram CEO was, you know, handpicked by Klaus Anal Schwab. <laughs> Great reset, dude. I don't know. I, I really don't know the power games. Like f- f- as I parse into work by Sabak, for example, it does seem like there's always been a weird type of seraphim, cherubim, angels and fallen angels type of uh, dialectic going on in the power structure. Like there's always been a rivalry between gangs, if you will. And uh, in a sense, that's like the matriarchy, patriarchy too, which is we could get into that symbolically if we wanted to try to hit some detail, but I think we see the synthesis of that dialectic come out in how the way that it doesn't matter which side, how many Cokes or Pepsis there are, the same thing happens. It doesn't matter if who's elected, they're all related, you know, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. So well, what, what is, group, yeah, I was going to just ask what is like the, um, it's like pictures the larger and narrative that, that, that they're what is what are the McAfee people claiming or what's going on over there? Because I have no idea. It's just like a show, dude. I mean, it's all the same. It's all the stuff that the Q movement revealed to people who were already or who were like conspiracy light culture or hadn't been studying these bloodlines for a long time to know all this already, which is that, you know, Hollywood and politicians and certain individuals are actually darker cultists and the whole system is run on a blackmail network and uh that they're sacrificing children abusing children and in the telegram group here's what mcafee supposedly did supposedly he had a huge treasure trove of data and evidence and uh that that was on a dead man's trigger and that now it's being leaked as it's in the blockchain so no one can stop it from coming out it's part of 
a blockchain, right? Well, so that's like, a, is there proof of that, or is it just well, it's people are accessing it through blockchain uh, addresses or whatever. That's part of how the leak is working. Like, new codes will come out every couple of days, and then people will go grab what is on there and post it in Telegram and on Reddit or whatever. Probably not allowed on Reddit. Anyway, it's pretty horrific stuff. Actually, it's like, you know, it's Pizzagate made real with footage and imagery of super bad stuff that you so like real image real images these people are sharing or just bro is any speculation right but like pause the podcast right now and go to a website this person does not exist.com check it out every time you refresh the page it is a photographic quality image of a different computer generated person that isn't even real so i can't tell you if that shit's real but what I can tell you is there is an over there's a you know the concept of the Overton window? Give me a refresher. I know that I've heard it, but what is that again? It's like when you reach that threshold of it's a sociological concept, and it's like you got a window right here, and above the, at the top, it's uh relating to more freedom, and at the bottom it's relating to less freedom. And in the middle is kind of like what's generally acceptable to everybody. And as freedoms are granted or taken away, these changes fall in somewhere on this window where they're either outside of the box of what is acceptable. The Overton window is that box. Like that's too radical. We can't do that. It's too, we're giving people too much freedom or that's too restrictive, whatever. But if things are snuck in where it's just on the edge of what's acceptable, then over time, the window starts to change and that area that was paused like previously only barely acceptable is now just mildly shocking. And yeah. so when you see something like the cuties thing on Netflix, that's the Overton window in effect. It is totally make making acceptable and bringing in, eventually you make these things demanded by the culture is what's weird about it. Like things that are high demand cultural <laughs> phenomenon right now, we got great grandparents that would have killed people if they saw him doing it like straight up. Do you ever follow uh libs of TikTok? No, I don't TikTok, but <laughs> Well, I, I follow it. It's That's what t- I think this McAfee stuff is. I think Pizzagate was the first drip of that and now the McAfee stuff, Pizzagate was like a small group. I'm not even saying that none of it is true. But I'm saying that it's being leaked to us. The the hidden hand has always had a strategy of handing out information to those who are awake in their flock of, uh, you know, slaves in a way that those slaves then repeat and disseminate the information on their behalf. And it's part of the manufacture of consent, because if you hear about something and you know about it, but you don't do anything about it, you're giving approval to it on a, on some level. And so Pizzagate was a beginning of entering the Overton window with this idea of elite child sacrifice and ritual abuse because before that it was outside of believability and only the hardcore conspiracy researchers were saying stuff like that you know your david ikes or your tessarions but now pizzagate happens all of a sudden it's part of the dialogue of the extreme right or whatever and then now we have we had a few hundred or thousand people researching pizzagate maybe more than that but now we've got hundreds of thousands on this mcafee telegram group getting regular updates of Pizzagate 2.0, like the next level of it. Like I said, maybe real, maybe not. I actually do think that the uh, elites have blackmail networks where they do make each other do stuff like this. And some of them are actually into it, but uh, it's also more and more people know about it. They're making jokes about it on South Park. They're showing Obama torturing children in a cartoon form. That's the Overton window in effect, because before it was like super offensive and shocking when it was Pizzagate and people were ready to go kill someone. And they even told you on the news that somebody was going to go shoot someplace up over it and super scary, homegrown, radical, domestic terrorists, right wing extremists, whatever. And then now we move into South Park making jokes about it. Now it's a joke. I know it's crazy to think that at some point it might even be acceptable or demanded the idea of sacrificing children and all of that. But uh, think about abortion, dude. There was a point where that was com- definitely would have not been acceptable to anyone. And now it's in vogue. It's demanded. 
So as hardcore as it is to imagine that that could occur with like Pizzagate type material become popular and cool. Well, you've got the church of Satan already appealing for the right to do at home abortions for their ceremonies because, Hey, it's just the same as getting a regular abortion. My body, my choice, get your warp speed MAGA jab, everybody. Anyway, rant over. (laughs) No. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. It's, um, so just, I'm still curious, like when you're saying that the, this McAfee group is kind of like Q 2.0, what ex- like what is like the larger narrative that they're spinning? Are they saying that these, so there's this information that's on the blockchain that they're decoding. So like, it's not like a dump all at once. It's, it's gradual and it's dragging you through these like date after date after date. I mean, that sounds like it's very Q similar to me, but are they, are they, do they have it's like Q dude, listen to this. I just went to the group. I'm sorry to cut in, but I just want to answer your question. All right, here it is. I'm going to read something from here. Uh, Loaded, triggered, blackout necessary. And the out in blackout has a Q instead of an O. Do you believe in coincidences? When does it begin? God does it end? As darkness falls, every lie will be revealed. Power will be given back to we the people. Yada, yada, yada. And at the end, it says John Mac. It's signed John McAfee. And there's post after post that's just this bullshit cryptid crypt- so that that was taken from the blockchain that message that that was released. oh man here's a good one dude they may be pushing their story forward they may be trying to make wow i'm looking at this and it sounds like they're trying to say q is ai so maybe this is the narrative to make people like love ai but it says uh i've heard q is as, ai before the world as we know it has perished mother nature has taken back what is hers but in this demolished world one person found the key to survive After discovering advanced quantum computing known as Q, he reveals the path to a new era and a new world is set to rise from the ashes. Are you ready to take back what is ours? Oh my God. And then there's more to this post, but you know, and then it says John McAfee. It's, uh, I don't remember him talking in that tone. Like, (laughs) no, John McAfee was, he would talk about, he was a wild card, but that is just like, that shit sounds like AI to me. It knows the catchphrases that gets like the response. Like, but just why would it, why would anyone fall for that again? I, I can't even believe it. I mean, it'd be great. Okay, if there's data, it's if part, there's, if there's too, evidence, poisoning super crucial to poison people's worldview as much as possible. Make them think World War Three is coming. Make them think that there's a lot of child abuse going on, which might be, but just get people into the most negative worldview possible. That's always been part of the jam. Jen yeah. in the chat asked if uh, we thought the astrological transits could f- hint at a possible nuclear crisis at the end of this year. Um, interesting um, because of there are aspects right now or that will be happening in December, she says, that fit to the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis in ni- uh, 1986 Chernobyl and 2011 Fukushima. Would love to know what some of those uh, similar aspects are. I personally think nukes are not what we're told they are. I'm not really a believer in the whole like uh, kill scientific kill switch to end the world. Pretty convenient story if you want everyone to be totally terrified all the time, but I'm not into it personally. Yeah. I have yet to see any proof that wasn't highly suspect of the existence of nuclear weapons. Um, come at me. <laughs> well, if if um, if Jen knows specifically what aspects are recurring in t- in December 2021 that happened in 1962, that would be helpful. I let's see what she got because so, I know that. Uh, I mean, okay, at the, the the rest of the year, I had to do kind of like a a fall forecast and. I said basically this week was going to be the last good week and then it's going to be kind of difficult all the way to the end. But um, in December, like even when they're releasing this Matrix movie, like on the 22nd or whatever, like the holidays do not look merry by any means this year because Venus is stationing retrograde. And before she does that, there's like solar eclipses in Scorpio Taurus and 
um, Mars is activating the Saturn Uranus square. So like, <laughs> but it's interesting. I, I don't know the 1962 connection, but I do know that like 20, like the stuff that, that went down in February and late January of this year actually was very similar to the early sixties. Like in the early sixties, there was a huge pileup of planets in Aquarius. Like all, I think every planet was in Aquarius at a moment, maybe other than one. And we came close to that again this year. So that's all I really know. Unless Jen has uh, more specifics on that. We will see. I'm just, you know, keeping an eye on your your live chat there. Uh, I'm not going to research it myself because I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> There's probably yeah. some really good resources for that, though, that just show you transit patterns. I mean, at the end of the day, you could just think about, like, how long is a Jupiterian year? How long is a Saturnian year? 20 cetera, years. Cetera. <laughs> Literally, yeah. this 9-11 to COVID thing is totally in line with Saturn-Jupiter because the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction that happened, there was one that happened in, I think it was May of 2000, 20 years later, it happened in December of 2020. And Jupiter and Saturn, even right now, if you like where I'm at, it's 8.23 PM. Like you can see they're next to each other in the sky right now. And that's, that's a 20 year period where they are next to each other. And lo and behold, like it's the 20 year anniversary of 9-11, 9-11 ushered us into that 20-year Saturn-Jupiter period and COVID is ushering us into the next one and it's so dystopian. But what? Are, so what are your, do you have any thoughts, any more thoughts or reflections on what, like this week and the tw- this 20-year anniversary and what seems to be going down like right now given that it's been 20 years? Well, they, you know, they did poke us on the eye with that Philip Zelikow guy that I already brought up. But I think generally we just need to be reminded of 9-11 as many times as possible. And I think it's the uh, – it was described as like the Pearl Harbor of a generation or whatever. And so was Cooties, the Surgeon General. or what, I don't know why you, your surgeon needs to be a general, but I think he was uh, Orange Man's Surgeon General like in April or something of 2020 when this was all kicking off might have even been in March really early on. He was like, this will be the defining moment of a generation and it's our Pearl Harbor or our nine 11 or whatever. And if you pay attention, they're saying that at all kinds of places that they want you to look at this as a Pearl Harbor nine 11 moment. And weren't those attacks, but also weren't they staged in a way, not that nobody died, but like, no, they were totally staged. <laughs> they were totally staged, both of them. So, you know, they're letting – this is part of the uh, manufacturing consent and revelation of the method, that old, that old trick that keeps the karma more on us because we're really perpetrating this whole illusion by believing in it and acting like it's real. And they're letting us know all the time, like, wink, wink, it's – we're just – this is TV. You're watching theater. You know, we're actors – you know, it's your choice to believe what you see on fiction. Wow, you can't even tell the difference between fi- They're laughing at you. <laughs> Not you listening, because you guys probably are pretty tight because you're uh, listening to Dan. And I doubt that you're super scared of cooties. But at the end of the day, like, don't be scared of cooties. We've got a very incorrect view of our biology. I won't be able to tell you what the correct view is, but I have hunches on what direction we should look, like electricity and plasma rather than germs and viruses. But uh, that all being said, what model of reality on any level was ever right uh, at the end of the day? We found out, oh, this doesn't work. We're throwing that out and going with a new one. Like to believe we've got it figured out now is silly. And to even assume that the game doesn't change based on what we all think the game is, in my opinion, is kind of silly too in the age of the quantum slit experiment like let's just get real about what is real and what is real is life exists and will continue to exist and we are part of that existence and the spark within us is the eternal spark of all that is so that means 
there's really nothing to be afraid of, especially not death or anything else they could scare you with. So at the end of the day, every, every threat, every coercion is like either loss of freedom or death. So if you a know that freedom is literally synonymous with spirit and it is the grounds of your being and it, when they say the universe is love or God is love, what they mean is freedom because love think about when you really love something, you're cool with it expressing itself in any myriad of infinite potential. What love is the recognition. This goes back to why I think more people should get out of the invisibility cloak and like embrace that they want to be seen, embrace being recognized for who they are. Go for it because we all want to be seen and recognized for our potential. It's actually beautiful, but love sees the potential and real unconditional love sees the infinite potential in whatever it loves. And fear is a constrictive force. It must be one way. There can only be one. We're afraid of what might happen, not looking at the, the truth that anything could happen. And so we act in such a way that we're trying to bring about one desired outcome. And that's the only way where things will be okay is if it turns out like this. And that's what fear is like. Uh, you know, it's part of the binary of the one and the zero and the pole and the hole and the, di- you know, the duality baked into the contrarium baked into consciousness. And it's okay to recognize that. Sometimes we actually do want to guide an outcome towards a specific state. I'm not saying that there's no place for that, but we don't have to be afraid if the outcome has some wiggle to uh, outside of what we were trying to do and just recognize that at the end of the day, what's important is that our potential is unlimited. You're omnificent. You might not be omnipotent. Like you don't have that God all knowing omniscient, omnipotent thing going on, omnipresent, but you do have omnificence. Omnificent is a word that means possessing infinite creative potential. And as limited as we are, we've still got that. That's what we got. So anyway, we can win any situation that we're seeing right now if we stay in the love perspective, if we stay open to all the possibilities as much as we can and not be afraid that things have to go one way or the other or we're screwed. Even when we see the further pollution of our worldview to things like what's going on in Australia, well, it ain't over till it's over, as they say. And the beautiful thing about life and the fact that existence exists perpetually and is eternal is that it isn't even going to be over. So what's there to worry about? Yeah, it gets me think. Well, when you're talking about like creative potential and like love and excitement, like I'm down with um, things getting more extreme. Like literally, if I if I lose my job for not getting vaxxed and I have to move to Montana, that's that's a new adventure. Literally, <laughs> like so even as and things need to get like things need to get more extreme so we can like finally fucking nip this in the bud and finally like t- not from like a Q point of view like take take down the elites but at least have whatever happens to the elites is one thing but if there's mass awakening and people are finally don't give a fuck about breaking the mask rule or the vax rule or whatever bullshit That's mandate they come up with been chill here yeah like, I never so put one on yeah. And I, but, but, but basically like, I'm just saying like, if it depends on where you live, but if things, if they crunch us and crunch us and crunch us and those of us that made it this far, I think are going to keep going and the NPCs are literally going to be euthanized or something, but, or like transhumanized. Um, but I, I'm same thing. I'm, I'm excited about the more challenges and to like, keep this because this has been awesome like i moved i moved to colorado right before covid and like it it's been a an adventure to to step into this like truth or perspective where people like me and you are just talking shit on it open openly thank god we're like willing to do that and i feel like as they raise the stakes more i'm like bring it on like this is more fun this is more of a game now and there could be <laughs> new like adventures in store if this apocalypse really gets kicked up a a couple notches you know yeah it's a fun it's kind of a fun thing to radically be yourself and uh 
unfuckwithable way. Like, it's it's cool to have self esteem. That's the last thing that the kill your ego programming was trying to give you was self esteem. <laughs> trying to like yeah. make everybody else the special one. But we can all be the infinitely special creative one and all be uniquely awesome in our own way that nobody else could ever be. It's great. Uh, Jin replied to us, though. She said, you get it. It's the big baddie conjunctions in uh, the pile up in Aquarius, right? Sidereally, she says. Also, she seems to agree that nuclear just means news stories. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And of course, there was that 1918 Spanish, so-called Spanish flu uh, that has some similar Jupiterian stuff going on to spring of this year. Yeah, I have heard and, a uh, comparison next to year. that with the um, the person who was talking about that is Marin Altman. And she was saying, basically, uh, right now, Jupiter and Saturn are both in Aquarius. So Jupiter is retrograding and moving closer to Aquarius. So like tonight, if you even looked outside, you would see the two of them. But then eventually Jupiter is going to move back into Pisces where Neptune is. Neptune moves really slow. And there was a Jupiter-Neptune conjunction during the 2018 um, flu or whatever. So 1918, you mean? So that's part of Jupiter. Jupiter is going to be expanding Neptune, right? So like our deep deepest held wishes and spiritual development ought to be God, influenced and, by that. And I'm thinking new age. I I'm thinking how I hate the new age now. <laughs> I can't even, uh, I, like I, I can't age. even fathom what kind of cutard new age stuff is going to be being brought what forward I'm forward to see. I'm going to take that and run with it though, because I've noticed that in the last, I don't know, five or six years, my access to the astral last five years, maybe, has been real limited. Like oh, when I really? first started getting into meditation and, uh, you know, spiritual work, if you will, especially like early on for a few years, like, I don't know, between the ages of 23 to 26, or especially it was strong. Like I would get into a meditation and I would like beings would be popping out. And like, uh, I would, I would go into lucid dream type, states during meditation where like wild stuff was going on. I didn't really remember it afterwards, but I was going places, man. And it tapered off. And then for the last four or five years, I don't know if this is sky clock or my own health or my own energy, but for a while there, my meditation and and spiritual practices have been less like visualization, less astral travel. E not that I've had zero experiences like that over the last couple of years, It's probably my own health, but I've made some good changes. And by next year, all of that stuff, like things will detox out of me to a large degree energetically and internally. And I I look forward to it because I think for me anyway, that Jupiter is going to blow up my Neptune in the sense of uh, like some internal illumination, like getting to go to deeper, deeper places, uh, vaster vistas inside my inner verse right i'm hoping yeah. for that anyway yeah it's total. that's the planet they're both they're both associated with that just kind of like the i don't know if your third eye is open it, like it, the third eye open experience of like visually and experientially like it's traveling. weird my third yeah. eye in the in the 3d material realm is lit like i see auras and stuff like that like i'm i'm third eye open i think out here but it's just the inner journeys got kind of cut off and i've noticed that the last month or two dreams are getting really strong again um yeah and i'm i'm happy about it because i have i'm a big dream flyer like every dream i'm flying <laughs> so i have a lot of fun at night whenever i can actually get in there but there was this weird blockage for me personally i don't know if other people can relate to that I think that we're getting through some stuff and we're going to see a good year next year. Just like a lot of us, despite the pandemic have had in many respects, the best year of our lives because we don't have this poison worldview and self view. Yeah. Um, were you having more intense dreams during like the thick of COVID? Cause I definitely was. And I've heard 
Like it was, no. it was like, it was like the winter of 2020 or like the early spring. I just remember being like, I'm smoking weed. I shouldn't be dreaming this hard. <laughs> like, um, but then kind of recently, recently they've been super vivid too. And it's just so crazy. Um, so you feel that dude, like recently they've been really, vivid. yeah. Like something, in the last two weeks going on on that part of the fractal. And there's no reason that, like I should be dreaming that hard. Like, and, but random nights. Yeah. And it's, um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I've been, um, I've really been challenging my inner new agey beliefs and really like being like, what is it? How does, how is this serving me now? And how is the world around me? Like the actual evil that's going on in this world, getting distracted by my like, spiritual bypassing or just like like focusing too much on the positive and being like wait this is this world is fucked like i almost feel like i feel like my like maybe maybe the the kind of warrior spirit is is birth is starting to come forward because a a lot of us have just been rebels fired up as as hell right now (laughs) yeah and it's like um I think I think a lot of people are going to hit a, a threshold point where they're they're just like middle finger in the air, fuck this, like no more, and just like really get that like masculine, just like warrior, ready to fucking destroy, because this stuff is worth destroying. And I'm, it, you know, in the Christian thing that I'm talking about, like they have this like righteousness, they're so righteous, but I'm like, you know what? the the black and white like the actual evil in this world whether it is like the 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 children q stuff which like is there but even just the in your face like fascistic like um tyranny that we're facing i'm just like nope that that this needs to be destroyed in a in an aggressive way like i and i'm um from the new age perspective i would be like no like just focus it away like think positive and it'll go away i'm like i kind of have been doing that the whole time and shit has not gone away and now i'm just like time to fight and time to get riled up about this so i'm not even think you know i'm gonna disagree to a, a point maybe i'm wrong but i don't even think we we gotta fight i love the percy shelley quote when all men are good and wise government will of itself decay and that doesn't mean that we have to wait for all men to become good and wise. But like you were saying about like, maybe I don't need to be relentlessly positive and spiritually bypassing wise means realistic. (laughs) So you don't have to be negative, but there is realism. Like take stock of don't lie to yourself where you're really at. But if you get some wisdom, then all the ways that we're dependent on this stupid beast system can be, those cords can be cut. And then at least for ourselves, we're, we're off doing our thing out outside of that grid. And I think we can all get there. And I think that we even have the freedom to go so far as to choose to be in both worlds a little bit. And like, which, how, which ratio or proportion we're in one or the other. Uh, not that you can serve two masters at the same time, biblically speaking, but mm-hmm. you can, if you know what that system is and you don't serve it, you actually can make it work for you. The whole legal system is actually designed in our favor if we knew our rights, but we sign our rights away with a whole bunch of silly things like uh 13 amendment amendment citizenship but i want to yeah. address that um woo woo thing a little bit just like a i want to bring up a dichotomy that's really interesting that i think doesn't get spoken about often and we all know that you know we all rag on scientific materialism right but do you know wilhelm reich yeah wilhelm reich mm-hmm. in his book Ether, God, and Devil, really awesome book. He talks about how the imbalanced mind is either tilted towards mechanism or mysticism. And he uses mysticism in a negative connotation here. Like true mysticism that's positive is embracing the mystery of life. And that's a good thing because the mystery is my story as opposed to his story of history. So embrace that history is a mystery and jettison all of that. But don't go so far into 
right brain imbalance that your mysticism becomes just as ridiculous as the mechanistic left brain side. Like mysticism on this definition, this way of looking at it is believing in ideas about things and realms that have no concrete capital R reality here and now that people would just, either you had to take someone's word for it or they took your word for it or at the very least you're having the similar experience because you flavored it based on the, what you believe from what someone else told you or some book you read. So at the end of the day, both sides are a destructive way of approaching the world to be fully mechanistic or fully mystic. But the advantage of having gone down both of these paths, because most of us have, is now we can see that we don't have to prove shit to anybody. In fact, you can't. There's no way to prove anything to anybody at any time other than through direct lived experience. Like there's some things I could prove to you if we're right there together and we we did something in action together. But beyond that, like we're in the age of deep fakes, baby. Everything is potentially fake. No need to believe any mysticism or mechanism about anything and just let the Zetetic path guide you and what it, let what is be what is and... Let nature and your own lived experience of life inform what you accept and don't accept and go far, go as far as you can with real, the, the belief is the enemy of knowing thing. I'm not saying you shouldn't have beliefs, just know how powerful they are. But also, well, I mean, give, but like the deepest, most beginning beliefs, like about everything and, and really get crunching on how much of that is false mysticism or false mechanism that you never you know, went and checked. Yeah. I mean that I I'm following you th- with that, but like, I, I, so are you saying like, it's better to just kind of be a pacifist in the, in these times and just like merge with your inner knowing Not or pacifist whatever? because, you know, do no harm, but take no shit. That's where I'm at. Like be ready, but I don't think, be afraid yeah, that the, don't be afraid the war's coming to your doorstep. Unless you're, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of it. I'm no. just ready to fucking destroy what needs to be destroyed. And like, I'm with you there. I'm sick. But of, we can destroy by withdrawing our participation to a large degree. I think, especially if we're, but like know, two two thirds of the sheep are gone in a few years. If people like uh, us yeah. are then withdrawing, what government? Who, who's there going to be to govern anyway? But I'm just saying, like, I'm like having sort of just. This is just where I'm at. Like having like a very like step back and like go within and not be active or not address these things around me. Like I've pretty much kind of been, I did that in the beginning of the pandemic. I did it like in different parts throughout the middle of the pandemic, whatever. And things have not gotten better and things have gotten so fucked up in this outer world. And it's like, yeah, of course, I'm not going to let the propaganda get to me and I'm not going to um, fall for it or like be afraid of it. But I am I'm not trying to be a pacifist about this anymore. Like I'm I I think that was the failings of Q. Just sit back, watch the show, grab your popcorn, sit back, like meditate, go within. It'll pass. It's like, no, this shit is not passing. There's fucking there's camps in Australia Australia is talking on the news about the new world order and a lot, this, this shit time, is yeah. here. It's here. And like, and this has, this is just me where I'm at thinking of the new age in particular and these new critiques I'm absorbing, but it's like, I don't want to be fucking in a trailer in a camp quarantining trying to manifest myself out of it. I want to <laughs> scream out loud for the retards out there and the NPCs that this, that this is not going to fly. This is not what we're, this is not this, what this country is about. And like, I'm sorry, but like the manifest, the, the, the idea of just like manifesting a better reality, manifesting this, that shit ain't going to work. Like unless people are vocal and like, really kind of sounding the alarm i don't see things going well and and that and i'm not saying this out of like fear or paranoia i'm saying it out of like excitement and passion and like joy really to be like i'm ready to fuck this fucking fight this or destroy this you know this evil in the world 
that the new age wants to say doesn't exist. It's at your, it's literally at your doorstep and the new age is not, (laughs) it's not giving me any answers except how to be, um, a pacifist and to avoid reality around me as it closes in on us day by day by day. And people are like, fuck that. Like, I can't believe that's that. That's I know better. I know it's a psyop. I know it's bullshit. It's like, yeah, well your fucking boss doesn't. My boss doesn't. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just like, like embracing, you, you embracing the battle, you know? That's the issue. There's I don't like, need to follow any. I, I'm just saying, like, if you're asking, you me can't that. go like lone, you know, lone Dan against the Leviathan either. Well, I, 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 so I, I there's other voices. There's the best offense, and in, in a lot of, a lot of ways of looking at this. Uh, I mean, like, I know we're not alone in thinking this is bullshit, and there's tons of like powerful, influential, mainstream voices that are starting to go out against it, but like. I'm I'm not going to be a pacifist about this. <laughs> I refuse to cuz that's literally the psyop. The psyop of the Qtards is to sit back and wait for the savior, sit back and eat the popcorn or whatever, and I'm just like I kind of was doing that. I didn't believe yeah. in Q, but I was kind of well, doing that, and I'm just like nope, fuck this like the, this, what does salvation look like for you, though, Dan? Not from an external per se, but like what, you know, what's the out, best possible outcome that you can think of for your life five years from now? To every- I mean, just honestly, to to know and like to really know the truth that this stuff that's happening in the world is evil and needs to be stopped or destroyed, and to recognize that. In my time here, I like did something about it versus did nothing about it. And <clears throat> yeah, but what's it look like for you? Like, what's your life like that? At, what's your life like after that thing is destroyed? You know, what's your ideal life? I mean, it's your- it's the same. It's I'm still living my life and just like, you know, trying to learn and trying to take life day by day. But the, today, like in this moment, on nine nine, <laughs> like. Today, I don't give two fucks about um, holding back, you know, and I don't give two fucks about spiritually bypassing anything or like um, or just like wooing it away, being like, woo, 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 woo. like I just want to um, call a spade a spade and say we're living in the fucking new world order <laughs> like we are. We've been talking about it. We have for, been for. I know, but it, it, but but like today in particular it's like we're crossing a threshold and the bypassing and the like for me at least like and i'm just talking about like the the content i consume and we'll the see ideas how it even I goes hold. though you know like we got a lot of guns in this country do you i don't know man like i foresee that it's not going well this whole new mandate my whole point though about asking your sovereignty question like what does your life look like if you win yeah is you can use the same strategy that the uh, sorcerers use. You think of the desired outcome and you work backwards from there. And mm-hmm. that would mean like for me to answer that own question for myself is like, I'm living somewhere that there's water on the land that's clean and I don't have to go to a store for it. And there's a way like maybe I'm involved with it or maybe I'm providing something else and other people are helping me on the food front, but there's food right there. Like as much as we would need, we can handle in that spot. And that's totally know, ideally, realistic for you. <laughs> I, ideally, I got the ability to still do this kind of thing um, to some degree because it's super fun. But that's kind mm-hmm. of me working backwards. To me, I win. If I achieve all that, I win. And I'm on. A, I'm in a place where the only thing that could ruin the vibe is if... Uh, you know, an army showed up at the door and they're going to kill us, but I right. just don't see it going that far. Plus we'd all have guns and then we'd make it ugly. And that's see, I'm down for the last stand, the wait, like, you know, that Waco last stand or whatever, but I'm not trying to get behind any raw, raw leaders, revolutionaries going in the circle, that type of thing. No. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, you said you haven't had to wear a mask 
where you lived for a while. Uh, yeah. or, or I did go to Denver. All. It was pretty bad, but I didn't wear one there either. But yeah, but like even when you were here, like it wasn't really mandated at that point. But for a minute there, I just followed all the rules and was like respectful to people's feelings who were like being NPCs. Oh, that needs to end, yeah. <laughs> but like, so, so like that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's not like I'm like, hey guys, meet me at the border with your I guns. I thought you were trying to start an army. Like, no, I but it, it- trying to recruit me. No, no, no. no terrorist no. cell. I know. <laughs> well, that is, that's what they're calling us. I'll join you. Yeah, but but literally like I'm thinking, I'm just thinking, um, you know, if where I, like where I live, you don't need to wear a mask anywhere. Technically people still do, but you don't need to. If, and if, and it's because they lifted that former rule. But if they bring it back, I'm not doing it. Like I'm not, it's at the point where all of these things have so many strings attached. And I'm not saying like, that was what that riled up energy was referring to mainly is being like walking into the grocery store and being like, fuck you, fuck you. Like, don't, don't come at me with this bullshit. I don't, I don't care. And then when those people, they get, they get shaken up and kind of like, you know, they either fall deeper into the NPC dumb and like think I'm an asshole or they say, I kind of agree, you know? And, um, this is a good nuance, but there's, there's just like, I'm just saying like at this point of the timeline, like today, as we talk, there's enough weight behind like all of the interconnectedness of everything that's wrong with what's going on for me to have more conviction and being like, no, I don't comply. I'm not participating in any of this. I got my COVID last year. I am not getting the vaccine and I'm never wearing a mask like done. And let's, let's argue about it. Let's fight about it. Come at me is basically where I'm at. I'm not saying, I know it might've come off that way. Like, you know, meet me at dawn with your guns (laughs) and dirty bombs. It's, it's not that whatsoever, but, um, you hear that FBI? It's not that. I know. We're on rock. We're on the rock fin. We're safe on rock. fin. (laughs) No, dude, Um, we're safe. But and and I'm I'm just kind of thinking out loud because today was one of those days where I was just like I'm ready to fight now. Like I'm ready to not not war fight. I'm literally ready to have debate. Whereas before I was like I don't want to ruffle anyone's fe- feathers. Maybe it's not the fucking new world order. Maybe it's not you know a global conspiracy. It fucking is. Like look at look at these countries that are falling for it. Look at what their politics are. Look at where the people are that are leading these countries. And America. Dude, it's a vibe today. And it's here. It's in America. They're trying to do it here, but th- like we're not, they can't just do it here like they can in No Guns Australia. Um, but um, I'm, just, I'm just thinking out loud because like I'm re examining, I'm not dismissing the woo woo perspective or the manifestation or any of that at all. I'm just saying like right now I'm I'm not trying to do anything that even borders on like spiritual we need the bypassing. alpha man we need the alpha male energy dude we need it it's yeah. good I'm actually with you uh this this morning okay I drew cards this morning I like to do a little divination that's my mm-hmm. morning woo woo ritual that I get into and uh in the I Ching I drew the oppression card it's like the hardcore abyssal it's the abyssal deep water over the abyssal deep water just double abyss Mm -hmm. (laughs) pure abyss energy and uh the next card i drew was upside down or reversed temperance yeah and then the third card was uh reversed um what the links i think which is about like secret keeper something like that so anyway the the vibe of the cards was like there's going to be restriction on your communication your creativity your art your self-expression and whatever you do try to put out there is going to be taken the wrong way and you're going to stump you know you're going to stumble on your words or smash your toe into the door jam metaphorically and I, i looked at that spread i don't know if i've ever done this before instead of just being like oh i guess that's what i'm like today i i looked at that and i went no (laughs) yeah nope (laughs) um whatever this is i'm transmuting that right now and like this fire 
Can That's been happening to me trust. every time I pull. I'm, I'm ready to throw out my tarot cards, and it's not because oh, I'm, I'm still into it. They're yeah, very yeah, valuable, yeah. but like, but I've just I had that, I've had that exact experience every time I pull the card, and I'm like. I can't, I need to take a break from this. And um, well, for me, what it was was like it was basically telling me that if you keep acting like you've been acting most of the time in the last couple of months, you keep in certain habits that aren't helpful to you. Uh, this is the result you're going to get. And then me, this fire came in me, and I was like, no, um, the things I need to let go of, uh, they're let go of. Like I won't. It's private, personal stuff. I'm not going to get into it but like this was this was a turning point i just i don't claim that i made this point the turning point like my will somehow created it it was like i you know what is the mystery behind when you decide to finally man up whenever or you don't or your mm-hmm. will is uh you're able to take self control of your will or whatever versus when you're having trouble what is that magical formula it's tricky like I, I, yeah, I think it's for just, me. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know how to do it. But at some moment today, the flip switch, and I was just like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm transcending this, whatever it is. And uh, it was accurate, like where I was accurate. But the cards were still accurate too. This, did, like those energies came at me today in all. Well, today was forms. an impressive day for sure. Exactly, but at no point did I lose my feeling of sovereignty or my spirit of rebellion against that oppression. It was like the rebel archetype woke up in me in a healthy way, ready to work with the other parts of myself instead of just uh, sabotaging me from the shadows because I was not fully aligned in my, uh, in my desires. Like it's kind of like that book, the never ending story. Your, if you wish for things that aren't really your deepest wish, that you'll get those wishes and you lose part of yourself because it wasn't really your authentic wish, if that makes sense. And I'm like done with the uh, inauthentic wishes and ready to get real. Well, I just think every man has a breaking point where they're just like, they call it anger, call it passion, whatever. Like, and you're an air. George is getting upset. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you, have the, you, you understand the fire element and I totally do too and it's like you know that's like the top that's like what they're saying like that's toxic masculinity to say you're pissed off and you want to destroy i'm like no i am pissed off and i want to fucking destroy right now i'm ready to smash this shit i'm ready to not hold back to not fucking censor and to just call a spade a spade and get riled up and like when we're talking from spiritual points of view that's like lighting your fire up that's using that's what the masculine element is you know so um yeah i there's there's definitely um i just think we're all getting clo- we're getting closer and closer and closer to a breaking point and then i feel like it could be like a domino effect where you know men just stop giving two fucks about polite society and just calling a spade a spade and be like fuck you you fucking npc get out of my way and don't you fucking tell me to put that mask on this is a scamdemic fuck yourself and you know just like get that get in that space because these en- easy going guy i i think i mean you know to each their own you have the right to take that stance because as soon as someone tries to violate your rights they lose their right for you to be nice to them but uh i don't know i'm just in this I've got that same level. I've got that same feeling rebellious Mm -hmm. level, but I can do it with a a grin or at least a smirk or remain neutral. I'm not saying that I wouldn't take action in a more dramatic way, but you know, if someone to me, it's like, I'd rather just dismiss the asshole, like to the point where they don't even have the power to, to like what they're, telling me is their requirement is so laughably ridiculous to me that that's the most they would get out of me is a laugh it off like <laughs> nah no nah, no nah, we're good i'm not putting the the chin diaper on you know like i i get the where the rage is coming from but uh and there's there's a way there's a way to direct and transmute that but i I'm not about to lose myself in it. Not saying that you are, but like my personal, I might be my personal design <laughs> is I'm just like, I'm happy with my naturally easygoing 
demeanor and I can keep that and still hold my boundaries really powerfully. You know, if I saw a child being harmed in front of me or something, I would crack a skull, but yeah, no, that exactly, exactly. And I'm at the point where I, the, it's not a child being harmed, but it's Dude, but fucking real, store, reality. The parents putting the, the diapers on their kids' faces, that really killed me, like last year especially. Yeah. You know that it's like causing kids to be lower IQ because most of your brain matter is wired for facial recognition. Like That's the most important. Because the universe is fractal, your face is a fractal of the whole thing every part of your brain is basically working on facial recognition. Not saying that those parts of the brain don't have other tasks, but like is literally a microcosm of your entire interface with reality is facial ID, facial recognition of other human beings. And that's, you know, it makes sense because nobody's quite got the same face as another person, except maybe like identical twins. And the covering of faces around children in their early developmental stage is totally messing up their intelligence levels it is yeah very, so very so technically when you said I, I if i saw someone do if, if i saw harm being done to a kid then i would actually get fired up and fucking be ready to kill someone <laughs> well harm is being done to kids this is yeah. harming kids more than anyone and so yeah and i'm just saying i'm not saying like i'm gonna hit the grocery store and just go off on someone and i'm pro- <laughs> that's not how it's gonna look but i'm just like uh, basking in this like energy of just like it's what hit the po- it's hit the point where if you are attacking this you are attacking the bad thing you know it, and it, it's it's very that's my biggest thing with the new age my biggest problem is like refusal to acknowledge polarity and refusal Nothing's to bad. Ign- Namaste. yeah to refusal to like Everything that's won. that's how this stuff is gonna get past us is and that's how like just the 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 anger is is justified at this point and so however it gets i'm just sitting here like um talking it out with you but that doesn't necessarily mean i'm going to start a a public argument or something but if it happens my perspective now is like this is actually about right and wrong this is about justice and i'm confident that being against this is the right position the correct position and I'm willing to like fight for it at this point because there was so much gray area and so much like, I don't want to ruffle anyone's feathers. I don't want to f- offend anyone. I want to yeah, be polite. I'm, to die on this hill I'm chill. Like, and I'm just like, that hasn't done anything for the larger situation where I'm looking at Australia or I'm looking at like Australia is going to come here. Like that it's all the same plan. So um, it's whether or not, like, I'm not saying it'll Except be six. Except we've got guns. Exactly. <laughs> we'll so team gun, <laughs> even though I don't own a gun. Dude, I really think that they're just setting them up to fail and Australia will be the test case. And then it'll really crash and burn here. Like, you know, uncle, uncle sniffer will, will retire from the uh, presidency. I'm pretty sure. I, yeah. I don't, I was thinking that something would happen to him. Like he'd get taken out, but now I think about it, I bet he'll just be like, I'm too tired and old and, confused and i just can't do this anymore so i'm out and then we get cackle cackle queen creepy lady i know and and like so much of this is just a a script so yeah that that's where that like so everything like this everything give it too much more energy no uh, exactly like so like d- saying like don't let it get you riled up don't just get triggered by it is still valid like to to have that inner ability to detach from pro- from propaganda is legit i think that's good for the propaganda but it's not good for compliance with the everyday reality of it cuz if we don't comply then it will go away but non-compliance can't have a like you can have the pacifist non-compliance, but I'm ready to do the not pacifist non-compliance and I'm ready to be aggressive with it. And well, when, when you study the legal system and how to make it work for you, the key crucial thing is staying in honor. And an aspect of commerce is that you actually don't non-comply or you don't uh, turn down offers with an, a hard no in commerce, 
traditionally in remaining in honor. Why honor mm-hmm. is important is because the honorable party will have the favor of the court in any situation. So the key to remaining in honor with contract and with these offers of like wear a diaper or get a cootie shot, it is to conditionally accept. So whenever this is key, in my opinion, whenever the tyranny is at your doorstep or you're witnessing it, like by trying to go in the grocery store or what have you. And, uh, you know, the general manager comes out and he's like, you can't eat at our restaurant without your face diaper. And you can use this one that has the mouth hole, but you have to wear it while you eat or whatever. Instead of just be like, fuck you, man, I'm never coming back here again, which you totally, you're right to do. Maybe you just don't come back there again. But you, you know, like what's going to be more effective on persuasion of an individual would be, I conditionally accept your offer. If you can provide for me the proof of X, Y, and Z and why I should and why it's a law and uh, (laughs) why it's safe and all these things, because then on the legal side, you could actually take that to a court and uh, you would win because instead of just rejecting what he was like, by rejecting it outright, you're also accepting the premise behind it because you're not refuting the premise behind it. But if you conditionally accept, then it becomes on them to prove or fulfill the aspects of your conditioning or of the conditions that you set. And you didn't say no, you were going to do it. It's the rule. Okay, I'll do it. But you had your own terms, which is part of contract law that you're, and that's part of self-defense. Actually, the wise, you know, karate master, Bruce Lee, he's going to teach you how to never even get in a fight to begin with. And that's kind of on the legal side. This is kind of part of learning that. And the last thing, the last thing that they want getting out of the bag that people are letting out of the bag in a lot of places, but they're distracting the hell out of us to keep it away. And they've been trying to keep it off the internet for decades, but it's too late and it's snowballing is the law. It's actually really simple um, when you know your rights and it's part of it's reflected in the legal system, this natural inherent freedom, this part of the fractal that we exist within and you can take advantage of that and uh, their own system becomes informed and put on notice that you serve something other than, you know, the corporation, your personhood that you serve the Jehovah or the all the I am what I am. And ain't no source we're going to cross that thing, that self. And it kind of it like an, another simple way to put it is that in the principle of mentalism, the mind that knows who it is versus the mind that thinks in terms of separation and compartmentalized consciousness, the one that knows who it is in its wholeness, it always the the vibration of the lower mind always then takes on the vibe of the more coherent mind. It's like you hear those stories about, this is how sympathetic magic works too, because most of the masses are trapped in separation consciousness. This is kind of ironic to come back here because we are dissing the new age and like the everything's one. But actually, it's not that everything is indivisibly one. We all have separate reality tunnels that we're in here and we're all being We're all our own unique being and expression of being. The fact is that the self part, if you strip down all the identities and then, you know, I, all the IDs and took them away, that wouldn't matter what species you were, the feeling of I am and I exist, that feeling is universal to all life. That is the divine spark. That's why it's called I am that I am. If you forgot your name, you forgot your species, you forgot what realm you're in, everything the feeling that you exist and that you are, that is the same feeling in everything that exists. And so that operating from that space is the real unity consciousness, because then you see that uh, the outward doth from the inward role to quote the the alchemist and that your energy will directly, you know, this is the secrets of manifestation or whatever, but your energy in a whole, if your energy system is operating in wholeness, 
and your entire feedback system and circuitry of your bioelectricity is in harmonic resonance, all the things around you are going to take on that type of coherence. It's actually just waveform mechanics, a dissonant, scattered, chaotic wave put into the same field space as a coherent, uh, harmonious, and you know, rhythmic wave, the dissonant wave takes on the harmonious wave pattern. This is how scalar wave technology can be used in the dealing with EMF pollution. Actually, that's how. But a like, thing so, so just to organize can change the uh, change the vibe of the EMF you're around. So, like, when you're talking about reaching that state of oneness, it's kind of. Uh, do you are you saying that's kind of like a blissed out state? No, no, it's still realistic, but it's just that it's your consciousness is feeling. So when you can, are compartmentalized on your internal energy system, there's parts of yourself that you're not allowing yourself to feel or be a cognizant of. And so coming into full totality of coherence, it's not like I can flip a switch and claim that I'm there, but I know that the further I get towards it, the more that the lower, the, the, the more that the uh, lower is a bad word, but the more dissonant vibes of other people just literally can't, they can't coexist in my space. Like, I don't have to kick them out. They just leave, if that makes sense, you know? And so even like the stickiest energy that I don't even know how to deal with, it just kind of starts to resolve. And uh, that's from that's from getting more coherent. I've been working a lot with tuning forks as a method of approaching that from the external. And that, say, that oneness thing I'm talking about, it's oneness within yourself. It is not like, you're trying to be the grand master God and Lord of all the external reality. It's that in your own bubble space, your personal cosmic egg, your world tree, you know, from root to branch, you've got, Oh, you're feeling it all. And that means that whenever something is off somewhere that it becomes dissonant or not coherent, you address, address that with your attention, your spiritual currency, and you send more current through your awareness to that spot. It's like, Try this sometime if you ever stub your toe and the feeling of the pain and the shock of stubbing your toe. The first thing people do is they reject that. They're like, oh, no, shit, fuck. And they're like, no, 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 ow, or whatever. But if you put your mind into the feeling of the pain, it actually gets way less bad because you're sending energy to it, voltage, electricity. And that actually goes for everything that you encounter if you if you're feeling it fully and you're not blocking the flow of feeling it's equivalent to not blocking the flow of the Tao or of you know so that's all the all the bad vibes that people get stuck in it's just stagnant energy and if you're a strong flow force if you're in a strong flow fit state you can that's what I'm when I talk about entering into perpetual synchronicity or getting to perpetual synchronicity. This is what I'm talking about. This is the flow state without end and you can tap it like, but you got to not the key is not lying to yourself and like maybe praying <laughs> to that, to that existence. Well, I mean, is, you. I, I just is have a, a question. You, praying is helping me out, but I'm not talking to uh, you know, bail or Lord. I'm talking to the spirit of self-existing yeah, life force energy. That's enough that I'm with you on that. And, but when you said like in a perpetual state of synchronicity, do you think that's a goal to try to, to strive for, or do you think that would be hard well, to you're, do? You're with? already in it. <laughs> We're already in it. Everything's already, you know, the sky clock, everything's already synced up, but it's about connecting the dots of your awareness to the synchronicity. Just like the fact that you might have, pain somewhere in your body, but because you blocked that out, you're not consciously feeling it. So consciousness is feeling is awareness is energy is life, right? So the more we open up to the reality of our inner state and how it really feels in there, even if it's not perfect, the more real our vibe gets and coherent it gets then the, our external world will, um, self-correct auto-correct as opposed to getting injected with the uh you know <laughs> one of the things about yeah. these mrna vaccines is like 
they're talking about autocorrect for your DNA with nanotechnology. And I'm like, good God. Auto-correct yeah, made by the guy so who made much, Windows, much- which shit. is full of viruses. <laughs> this is by design. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's not doing so well right now. Poor guy. Well, he's a he's a lifetime actor, so they just pull him from the stage now and then. But yeah, I mean, with everything That's you were right, saying about theater. about reaching these states, like I'm with you because I know like those are good tools to have in your arsenal that you can use like in your life. You know, like on the spot, you can call on all the the years you've worked on those. Cultiv- on cultivating those skills and I feel like uh, I'm kind of at the point where my pursuit of the spiritual stuff I'm almost like I'm almost like done <laughs> I'm almost ready to graduate and go live and not ever do that again <laughs> like and just be like oh okay when I'm at my matrix job like I need to think like oh this person is acting like uh, I don't know the king of swords or something it is and it's in there the seeker and become the knower yeah so and true. and that's just like that's because both of us i know we've like really you know a lot of stuff <laughs> like you know so many you've read so many books and stuff like that and you know this this it's it's great that you're like still doing that and dedicating time and like you're always coming up with like new stuff. Like when I watch your show, like new authors, new techniques I've never heard of. And it's awesome. And I just think maybe it's cause I'm 34 years old now, but like I sense that, that, that my priorities are shifting and it doesn't mean I'm ditching all this work, but it means like, I just want to like put it into action without actively focusing on it as much anymore. And I don't know if you that will change or not. Yeah. Of look for it. Right. Exactly. Like I, I, I just, and it's just interesting because the, um, like everything you were talking about, like getting to the state of oneness and get and change the vibration, like doing that out in the world, like improvising that is where the magic, that's where the gold is. In my opinion is like, if when you're making an impact in the world and then you all of a sudden are like, I'm going to use this little trick I learned when I was like reading that tome about consciousness or whatever. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's some tricks, but not um, tricks even just like techniques or whatever understanding, you know, know my favorite hack is dude right now. This is a weighted tuning fork right here. You can get one from biofieldtuning.com. It's called the Sonic Slider. I've went on about this on my show a lot. I get no affiliate links or anything for this. I'm telling you, it's just pretty legit. And uh, you can use it on any part of your body, and it would be a long conversation to talk about the mechanics of biofield adjustment with sound. So do you, like, hit it to act? How do you, like, make it? So can you hear it in the mic? On my palm? Oh, yeah, actually, if I if I real quick turn off because I've seen you do this dampening, on your show or other shows, if I turn off the um, sound dampening or whatever background sound adjustment mm-hmm. on Zoom, which I just did, you should be able to hear it when I play it off my mixer. I have these recorded to my soundboard, so oh, it's nice. a nine ninety three point nine six cycles per second. I don't like the word hertz, uh, and that's the Schumann resonance times twelve. So it's the 12th harmonic of the Schumann resonance. That's what this fork is. And it's really low frequency. Body loves it. You hearing that, Um, Dave? (laughs) I wonder what note that is. I'm not sure. I could grab my guitar. I bet I could fix it. Because I feel like it would be. It might not be on like the Western scale, though. That's cool, though. I felt that. Yeah. And so you can use it anywhere on the body. When, like, try not to go on about it because we're kind of late in the show, but I healed a shoulder injury with this that I couldn't get over for a long time. That was when I first got it. But I've looked up the reflexology points on the feet mm. where different points of the bottom of your foot connect and the sides of your foot connect to organ systems in the body. Mm-hmm. And holy shit, 
you use this, it, like you put the weighted end on your body, like the way this touching my hand and a vibration from the fork runs through the fork and into your body. It actually cr- generates electrical effect because of the crystalline nature of much of your body's components that has a piezoelectric uh, effect, which is where crystals that are squeezed or or whatever, they actually generate an electric charge. This is why the quartz works as the, you know, for a, a clock or whatever accurately, because it has a certain vibratory electrical field. That's the thing. Vibration, sound is electricity and, mm-hmm. and it is light. They're all the same thing on different ends of the spectrum of perception, which we actually only have like a slice this big according to according to science. So anyway, when you are using sound, you're actually hitting your body with light. And it's also generating an electrical charge in a non, you know, non-artificial ways, but it's a mechanically stimulated electrical charge with this right here. So for example, my human design and also personal life choices and challenges has led me to have kind of lungs problems and solar plexus constriction problems, maybe some like heart, heart rate issues that aren't great. And when I use this on the bottom of my feet, on the points of the reflexology chart that correlate to heart or lungs or solar plexus, what have you, the switch is really quick, like one or two strikes and full runs of the fork. And my breath capacity with an inhale is like 25, 30, 40% better within like a minute of doing this. It's crazy. Wait, so is the one you have there is, is that the main one you have or are there like different, um, different well, types? Well, that's a good question. You know, I use this, the Sonic Slider is the one I recommend for everybody in the world to get one. Is for working on yourself. You can use it on other people too, but it's great for self work. I wish you were here so I could just like vibrate your skull cavity with it. You'd be like, Whoa. it looks cool. So it's how cool. how much are those? If I you don't mind me is, asking. I think the fork is like seventy five dollars. Not bad. This attachment isn't on the bottom can be removed, and there's different kinds of attachments. This is just my favorite one. This yeah. pattern of holes actually increases the electrical charge that's stimulated. From the vibration. So, like when you hit it on your I think your like forearm, the fork, and this combined are like seventy five and sixty dollars. But then it's gonna last you for a very long time. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I hit it on hit it on or on your palm, my palm right there. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Like that, you hitting it there isn't a part of how it works. It's just once it's struck, it starts working. Yep. Yeah, you could strike. That's just the best way to strike it. Uh, you could use a hockey puck. I, I do that for my non-weighted forks. And those look more like the kind of forks that people use to tune a piano or whatever. And I have a Solfeggio set. I want to get a solar Solfeggio, harmonic yeah. chakra set that is more like the traditional tones of 432A and up and down that scale. I had a set like that, but right before I went to Colorado last time, not the time that I went and saw you, I, it vanished on me. I lost it. Hadn't had it very long. So I took that as a sign to get the Solfeggio, which I like. And yeah, so sometimes those, I play those on YouTube, like just the Solfeggio, like on repeat. I've got those on my mixer board too. I could hit us with Solfeggio tones. <laughs> hit hit us with it, bro. Okay, so I'll talk over it. You said bit. harmonics, and I thought of my, I have like a pile of harmonicas I might just grab. Hold on. All right, I'm going to play some tones. Because I might be able to find the note it is. That's a three nine six. It sounds like a computer artificial sound or something. That is off of my tuning fork. It's just recorded. Just from a, like a mic. Yeah, yeah. I tried to do a really good job recording these. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> good. I was gonna say because you can't really hear it on the live it's mic. St- but... Still going too. So. I play those uh, in people's field in their bubble space and I can use the forks. I learned all this from Eileen Day McCusick. I can use the forks reaction in their bubble space, if you will, the six foot area off the body. And I can, there's a whole, there's a whole study, the biofield anatomy. It's a fascinating thing. 
different. And it really validates the spiritual idea of chakras mm-hmm. as a good conceptualization, not as an end all be all or a hard and fast rule, but that there's some that it's useful there. Like the human field biofield does have an anatomy, just like your nervous system is similar from person to person. So like if I had the chart, I could go over some examples, but you know, there's the left side and the right side, mother energy, father energy, the crown chakra, for example, what, like if there was energy that was stuck, it's like this, like we, we, we say we're off balance when we don't feel right. Right. When we have something traumatic or that we don't like about ourselves that we're trying to hide from ourself, what I was talking about earlier, not feeling it, num- numbing out, <laughs> we'll put, we push it into our field off to the left or the right. Like we don't want it. We don't want that energy as part of our central core where it's circulating. Mine is totally through. on the, my left side. Yeah. So you might already be aware that you have some issues going on on the left side. So with the, the forks, if there's a particularly big trauma or big identity that's been shoved off or a big problem with the mom or dad, that's sho- literally shoved off to the left or right. And the further away from the body, the younger you were when this initially began as a pattern in your field. And so with the fork, it's almost like drag and drop. You sweep the fork through their field, you will feel the snag or hear the snag. It's kind of different for different practitioners. This is part of the art of it is that it's helping you hone psychic ability to a degree and sensitivity. It helps maybe to already have some of that, which I got from largely from Qigong massively Mm. helped me understand the feeling of energy, but yeah, Mm. you can catch that. You can sort of scoop up that tangle of energy. You can break up, the rigidity of it by playing the coherent tone in the sticky spot and sweep that energy towards the core and reintegrate the stuck part of their self into their main energy system for circulation. You Over time, uh, this can be really effective to help people break out of patterns, all kinds of patterns. I mean, you can't say that it will heal X, Y, or Z, but you can't say it won't either. It's really remarkable it's a lot dependent on the person's choice too, because right after the healing session, their mind can put their, their biofield energy back into the same configuration as before with a single decision. Right. Mm -hmm. But once you feel what it's like to feel that lost part of yourself return to circulation and you intend or you pray or whatever you do other practices to try to keep yourself in that state of wholeness and balance, it makes a big difference and it changes even your physiology. Like, you know, uh, as we age and we get health problems on the bioelectric level, your cells are leaking light. Like your energy is just leaking out of you. You're, you're becoming porous. you no, your boundaries aren't holding, you know? And that's why the older folks that are really out of whack, their nose starts to get all long and crooked and their earlobes are all weird. And their face looks like it's melting off their damn head because their their cellular level, they're leaking light. Like, and they have been for a long time. And there's even wild before and after pictures of old ladies using the sonic slider and their face skin is like tightening up. <laughs> it's actually marketed as a beauty tool. If you go to the website, it's marketed to the normies as a cosmetic beauty tool. But damn, if it doesn't do all kinds of stuff, I'll make those claims all day because I don't sell them. <laughs> so you know, so but, do you like just kind of do it to yourself? Like you kind I of do just it for like, people too. Mm-hmm. Um, like I guess somewhat professionally hesitant to call it biofield tuning because that's kind of like their trademarks name but i'll just say i do sound healing sessions for people and and that's in person it, does it have to be in person the wild thing is no man it does not <laughs> it does not right in fact one of my recent sessions the uh individual was on a camping trip and they didn't even have cell reception really and we just picked an appointed time and they forgot that the time had come and they heard something or felt something and they went, Oh shit, what time is it? They like felt a tone <laughs> hit them because I was starting to do the work. So I lay out my massage table as if the uh, body's there. I holographically imaginarily project a human body on that, on that massage table. I don't even have mm-hmm. to go this far, but I like to make a, a whole theatrical show of it to help me get into the zone just like I would if they were really there. You know, I like talk to them, even if we're not on the phone, <laughs> I say all the stuff I would say, it's like as if they're really freaking there. And, uh, 
the forks react as if there's a body in the room with me the way they would in a person's field. That's crazy. There. And I, afterwards, like I take notes, I heard stuff here, here, and here. I tell them what it means based on the biofield anatomy. I ask them if any of that resonates with experiences they had at like age 15 or whatever the example is. And I kid you not, dude, it's real. There, we are connected non, it's a non-local connection, dude. Everything's really connected. <laughs> the uh, space-time thing is definitely illusory or at the very least we've got i'm not saying that the material reality is fake but i am saying that our idea of separation is fake yeah and and that's that's the truth because we are all connected by that life force energy spark that is the uh that is the whole fractal in a drop you know yeah i'm getting fired up talking about biofield tuning it doesn't even feel late yeah right well <laughs> i've seen you i've seen you bust that thing out and it's cool and it's um it's cool it's cool that even just when you demonstrate, you just give it a little strike and it starts sending that off. So I haven't seen a lot of people like promoting that or like using it. So it's cool that you, you got into that. It sounds sound like, cause I, I believe that everything is kind of like, even when you have little aches and pains, it's just like what's going on in your nervous system or in your cells or whatever. Um, yeah, so, another yeah. wild one is that people don't realize that when, when your brain hit, hits up the dopamine drip, it actually mm -hmm. creates pain chemicals in other parts of the body and pain signals as a way to try to bring you back to baseline from the dopamine high. So you see like we, we're getting, <laughs> yeah. we're getting young, young generations are like chronic pain already. It's happening in early and early ages. People got pain. And it's because the dopamine blast is nonstop. And even just from your phone, like especially from your phone. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that, I've been thinking about that lately, just like how, and I've just been on, like I, I was on a strict kind of diet for the summer and then I was like off it. And now I'm just embracing kind of like indulgence a little bit. I'm like, damn, I'm just like a fiend for dopamine. Like I just want to like, hit the bowl, like drink the thing, eat the food, look at the, f like get a like on social media. And it's just like, it's like in your, it's like a craving it's fucked up. So that makes sense that <laughs> it causes chronic pain. Yeah. And as soon as I learned that I started paying attention and I was like, damn, if it isn't true, like if I had yeah. a real bad dopamine blowout day, you know, all the addictions coming out to play, even old ones that I had put away for a while. The next day I'd be like, why is my lower back so sore? What did I do? I tweaked my back or something. And now I'm seeing the pattern. It's not a random occurrence of, oh, I hurt my back and I don't know how. It's like, it's all connected. Everything's connected, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a super fun chat chance. Um, we kind of just went all over the place and it was fun. I like it. And, and like when I was, when I was kind of rant, ranting against the new age, I was doing that cause that's in my personal, that's in my personal life. And you as someone who's as a friend, as someone who's familiar with it, like, I feel like I could just kind of vent it to you. So yeah, that's, dude, I'm, so I'm that's just kind of why I brought it up. It was just like on my mind, you get it. You're surrounded by it too. And we're on similar, like, wavelength so thanks for letting me just like go a little off the rails but um in general you know, i can't promise every episode of my show is free from the new age taint mm -hmm. but i can say that i always try to bring it to a balanced place and my telegram group is a haven a safe haven for spiritual renegades who uh conspirituality fans and those who are all about that synchro mystic synchronistic flow state of perpetual connectivity you know like yeah and, and the, the new is age wild. isn't even the new age is a huge umbrella term and what like i'm kind of aeon of horus <laughs> yeah what i'm critiquing is kind of just like the stuff you see the generic stuff that really kind of has clout by now it, it is a thing and Law it is of kind attraction of attraction cults and all that ex exactly so um that's that's kind of why I just brought it up out of the blue. Oh, I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. New cage. Yeah. But for the listeners and everybody, what do you got going on? I know you're doing um, you're doing the Ro the Rogue Ways event, right? 
Oh, thanks for asking. Yeah, because I'm I yeah. Pl- about that. Plug away. That's coming up. Yeah, Lindsay's a a friend of yours too, of course. On September 26th, we're doing one day of brightness with hosted by Lindsay Sharman of Rogue Ways. She's done this event every other solstice and equinox for the, for the last year, and this one's the one bringing us full circle or closing the year. And it's an all day online Zoom event. Only cost you like sixty dollars, I think, uh, to get the whole day and recording playback as well. And we've got kicking it off, Catherine O'Shea. She's a psychic animal communicator. You could really just call her like a soul communicator, but she talks to people's animals, it living or dead. Also has other psychic capacities. She's a great lady, and she's been at all of the One Day of Brightnesses. She's a super friend of Lindsay's. Then you got Michael Wan, Michael mm-hmm. freaking Wan. That guy is a wizard. If I've ever known one, love that dude. Uh, he, we've done some good shows on my on Interverse too, but I don't have a clue what Michael's going to teach us. But I trust him implicitly that it's going to be the right thing for the right time. And then me, I'll be finishing it out. Of course, Lindsay will be leading something. I think at the beginning and maybe like you know, emceeing it all. And me at the end, it might not be the only aspect of, of my segment, but I'm going to do a group remote sound healing session. So you get to try it out. And if I haven't sold it hard enough, $60 for all those people to provide their services, any one of us in a one-on-one, we cost a lot more than that. You know, you can work with me one-on-one and get a personal and customized session where you know, maybe we throw in tarot, maybe we throw in breathing practices, movement practices. I can work with you on on customizing an experience with me to be helpful to you. Um, you know, I, I recently figured out that I can use dowsing rods to measure the strength oh, of people's chakras. And I nice. can just go, yeah, I can just be like, okay, give me one minute. I'm going to do your, my diagnosis. And instead of having to spend a couple hours poking around in their field to find where all the problem spots are. I let the dowsing rods tell me where to look and it cuts down on the time and the effectiveness goes up. Like it's a great, it's great dude. Dowsing rods are totally legit, but uh, you know, that whole thing works on electricity too. Another subject for another day, but there's all that. Um, So for less than the price of any of us on our own, one day of brightness gets you all of us for the whole day and all the other people attending the event You might even make some friends. It is going to be cool. Like an online festival for our type of people. You should come Dan. I know uh, it's on the 26th. You said it's a Sunday. It's not right on the uh, solstice or it's equinox. Isn't it? September. It's not right on the equinox, but it is, you know, pretty close. As close as you could get. It's on Sunday the 26th. It's um, a couple weeks away. And then for me on on my side, like I said, I'm doing sound healing sessions for people. You can book that. Of course, I'm still making Interverse. That's my weekly podcast where you know, I'm interviewing the authors and the other podcast hosts. And speaking of Lindsay, she was just on last week where we talked about she did a whole presentation on psychopathy. Very good show. <laughs> I I, I listened to, I think I fell asleep to it. I, I think I played it as I fell asleep and I heard like the first half. So I have to fit, but yeah, check, check out Interverse for sure. And I got a new weekly show. I'm doing a live show every Wednesday night at 8 PM central time called vibe rant. You see what I did there? Vibrant. <laughs> now I, 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 <laughs> when not, you say it out loud, not until people now. don't get it till I say it out loud. But now I, I type get it. it out of them. <laughs> They're like, what, you're ranting? I'm like, it's vibrant, you know, vibrant. But that's a thing. Um, uh, the awesome Jenny B who was hanging out with us in the live stream, she actually made the, the sweet logo for me for it. So it's all coming together. And that's a community v- type vibe. Uh, maybe sometimes I'm alone and I take calls. Maybe other times I have a guest or a couple guests at once. It's like what I wanted was a free. I wanted to get free of my own format. I love the way Interverse goes, the two hour ish format, first hour free, first hour for subscribers, kind of seriously questioning something or seriously interviewing somebody. I mean, there's a couple more like free flow state type episodes in there, but I wanted to, I want to leave that in a more serious endeavor. You know, that's what you're paying me for type of thing. Mm -hmm. But I needed a place for people to land. 
we have a super lit telegram group but i want like i was saying it's time that we help the people who feel invisible begin to feel heard and seen and celebrated and i want everybody that is interested to come call in to vibrant it won't be like other radio shows necessarily depends on the week but wait you know where you say your piece and then you're out we could have a few, several people on screen at once and just hang out. You can talk to the other callers too. And, you know, if you guys don't contribute, it'll be just me entertaining you for the show, but, or me and my, my guest of the week, but vibrant is really about a free space where we can uh, connect more thoroughly than just in these chat channels, you know, and um, let other people say their piece. I learned so much from, my telegram group, the others in there that they're not quote unquote content creators or writers or whatever, mm -hmm. but all of us have the original intention behind interverse absolutely was the, the knowing that everybody out there has a perspective and knows something or could explain something that literally nobody else on earth could explain that way or at all. And that was what realizing that was what led me to be like, I got to start a podcast. Everyone I talk to blows my mind. And uh, so I want to make, you know, I want to bring that spirit into this vibrant new so weekly show. You've already done ep episodes of vibrant, three, right? Three so far. And yeah. so you've had, you've had callers and stuff. Yeah, dude. People called in right away. I didn't take that calls until tight. the second one. <laughs> it's super fun. And it is like one of those rock fin, like you're, you're literally the first live stream I've done. So it's on and you're, you're, at, you're also the, is. you're also the most frequent guest at this point. I think, I think this is your third time. Um, Hell yeah. I'll come back again. Um, I but, like that. I'm a, I'm a lot of people's like uh, go to these days. It's really fun not to like toot my own horn, but I absolutely love being on the guest side. So if you I know. And I was like, shows you like you're, you're like, do you have any subjects in, t in, in mind? I'm like, not really. We'll, f we'll figure it out. Cause we can do that. But if you got a subject, Dan, <laughs> hit me with it, and I'll make you a PowerPoint and everything, dude. I'm all about it. Right. The, yeah, totally. I'm all about it. Well, and, and if the audience doesn't know, we've actually hung out IRL, and that was super fun. And we, we went to Garden of the Gods, and and you came to my band's show. That was awesome, too. And you had- That was you the and, best. You and Lindsay had like a posse, and my bandmates were like- damn, you have like, you know, all these people from the internet. That's crazy. I was like, it's more them, but you know, yes, <laughs> but that was a fun, that yeah, was a fun Rachel week. Listened. Shout out Rachel too. Cause she was uh, in, she came and hung out with us. Oh yeah. From right. The, yeah. From the audience, if you will. Nice. And, and it, also if the audience says no chance is taller than you would expect. He's <laughs> kind like of a big, you're kind of a big guy. Two. So when we get into the apocalypse war, you're probably going to be able to kick some ass when the time comes. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'll just uh, have like some kind of frequency sound weapon. I'll just use my voice like in Dune. <laughs> right. And then just fall down. Well, yeah, definitely um, for the listeners, check out Interverse. Um, chances show like... I feel like a lot of the shows I listen to is like an echo chamber of the same people all the time. And you always, for me bring in people that I'm not familiar with. I'm like, Oh damn, where'd they come from? Like that's they're they're tight. That's awesome. So maybe that aligns with my audience to check out interverse to kind of like discover different voices that are not part of maybe this echo chamber. But, um, yeah, thanks again for coming on chance. Yeah. You got a really original show too, Dan. So don't cut yourself short, dude. We're on this ride together. You're my brother yeah. and my ally and my Hell friend. Yeah. Proud that we got to meet in person. It was a highlight of my entire journey as a podcast host so far with me, somebody yeah. that I'm a fan of. So, like, you know, much love and respect, my dude. Hell yeah, man. Well, thanks again. And um, I'm going to sign off if I figure out how to do that. All right. See you all later. <laughs>
guys, thanks for listening to my conversation with Chance. It was kind of a long one, and it was just real casual and fun, and we're just two homies chatting it out, and uh, thanks again for Chance coming on. Thanks again to Chance for coming on. Um, and definitely check out Interverse and his channel on Rockfin and my channel on Rockfin. Um, on Instagram, you can find me at Cosmic underscore Keys underscore podcast. Twitter, at Cosmic Keys 777. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Leave me a five-star review if you want. And um, yeah, that about does it. Have a great weekend. And I'll talk to you guys at the forecast.